Saturday evening in Arlington, Texas. No surprise as fans from throughout the state on hand for the second of this three-game weekend series between the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros on Baseball Night in America. Good evening, everybody. Kenny Albert along with former Ranger and Astro Mitch Williams. Texas Rangers tied atop the American League West with Oakland. And tonight, Mitch, a glimpse into the future as the youngest player in Major League Baseball, Jerickson Profar, makes his first ever start in the outfield. Well, yeah, we're going to see Jerickson Profar in left field. We all kind of wondered out loud, what are they going to do with the log jam in the infield here? When you have this kind of athletic ability, you make a spot for a guy like Jerickson Profar. This is last Friday. Look at the, how deep he gets at shortstop, the strong throws he makes. I mean, right here, this is that dude. Look how far he throws him out by on that play. He's already making plays in left field, Kenny. You might as well put him out there. Gary Pettis said he's ready. Ron Washington's buying it. Pro Far making his first start in the outfield, not only in the majors, never started in the minors as well. You Darvish, 3-0 and in his career against the Astros earlier today, named to the All-Star team in the American League for the second consecutive season. He was nearly perfect against the Astros back in April. Rangers, Astros, next. U Darvish tries for the Rangers' seventh straight win over Houston. 50 years of baseball in Texas is known for man-made wonders, local heroes, and lots of hitting. The Astros and Rangers have shared a hard-throwing Hall of Famer and faced off for the silver boot with some of the best offensive players of their time. And they both enjoyed deep October runs over the last decade. But it took until this season until they shared a division. The Lone Star State and now AL West rivalry continues next on Baseball Night in America. A hot, humid Saturday evening in Arlington, Texas. No surprise as fans from throughout the state on hand for the second of this three-game weekend series between the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros on Baseball Night in America. Good evening, everybody. Kenny Albert along with former Ranger and Astro Mitch Williams. Texas Rangers tied atop the American League West with Oakland. And tonight, Mitch, a glimpse into the future as the youngest player in Major League Baseball, Jerickson Profar, makes his first ever start in the outfield. 
Well, yeah, we're going to see Jerks and Profar in left field. We all kind of wondered out loud, what are they going to do with the log jam in the infield here? When you have this kind of athletic ability, you make a spot for a guy like Jerks and Profar. This is last Friday. Look at the, how deep he gets at shortstop, the strong throws he makes. I mean, right here, this is dead dude. Look how far he throws him out by on that play. He's already making plays in left field, Kenny. You might as well put him out there. Gary Pettis said he's ready. Ron Washington's buying it. Pro Farm making his first start in the outfield, not only in the majors, never started in the minors as well. Hugh Darvish, 3-0 in his career against the Astros earlier today, named to the All-Star team in the American League for the second consecutive season. He was nearly perfect against the Astros back in April. Rangers, Astros, next. Ten five victory last night, a 96 degree evening. Yes, Mitch, it is sunny and beautiful. The opening pitch tonight brought to you by Budweiser from May to July by Budweiser Benefits Military Families. Bill Porter celebrated his 41st birthday yesterday, his first season as the Astros manager, youngest skipper. In Major League Baseball. The Astros batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. Jose Altuve, an all-star last season, will lead off, followed by the first baseman, Brent Wallace. All-star Jason Castro hits third. Carlos Pena in the cleanup spot. Then Mark Kraus, Jimmy Paredes will hit sixth. Bottom of the order, Brandon Barnes, Matt Dominguez, and Jake Elmore as the Astros get set to face. 26-year-old right-hander Yu Darvish won for the first time in his last eight starts Sunday against Cincinnati, record of 8-3. and three. He is headed to his second consecutive All-Star game. Yeah, and when the scouting report on him, he's going to throw everything but the rosin bag at you. The catcher doesn't have enough fingers. I think he's best when he uses his 96-mile-an-hour four-seamer. And when he's ahead in the count, when you look at his strikeout totals, he knows how to put hitters away. 
perfect against the Astros in his career. 3-0 in three starts. Darvish here in Arlington over his first two seasons, 15 and 4. First pitch to Altuve. Darvish missing low and away. Ball one. And that's what he's going to have to do, Kenny. He wants to get ahead in the count. When he's ahead in the count, he's virtually unhittable with his breaking stuff. Altuve pops it up to the right side. The first baseman, Moreland, makes the catch. What a way. Defensively for the Rangers. Around the infield, Moreland, Kinsler, Andrews, and Beltre. We talked about Profar making his first start in the outfield. He's in left. Martin in center, Cruz in right. Nelson Cruz heading to his second All-Star game, and Giovanni Soto behind the plate, the battery of Garbage and Soto. For, for me, the thing that's going to be really tough on Profar as we look at him here, number one, that's the sun field this time of night, and number two, where does he line up? It's going to take Gary Pettis a whole lot of coaching to put him in a position each and every hitter. Brett Wallace, 0 for 3 in last night's game. Yeah, and there's Gary Pettis. I had the pleasure of playing against him and watching him run down stuff all over the place in center field. Yeah, he's done a lot of work with Profar in the outfield. Now 2 and 1 on Wallace. Batting just 164. He's 1 for 6 lifetime against Darvish. And this is a guy that the Astros at a uh, number one pick and they've expected a whole lot from him. He's changed his approach a little bit with that leg kick and that's what you do to a guy with a leg kick right there. You want to control when he gets that foot down with that breaking ball. He's going to have a hard time hitting Darvish. Watch a leg kick here. The timing of it all you want to do as a pitcher in that situation is upset that timing. First round pick of St. Louis back in 2008. 2-2 from Darvish and Wallace stays alive. And Darvish is right there. He is trying to back foot that slider and he has one of the best in the game. Especially the left handed hitters. This is where I think his 96 mile an hour four seam fastball would come in handy if he can elevate it right at Soto's mask in the middle of plate. But he's going with a slider. Darvish did throw more fastballs in his last start Sunday against Cincinnati. He had gotten seven starts without a win, but much of that due to a lack of run support. There's pitching coach Mike Maddox. And Mike was a sinker ball pitcher, and he's got a lot of these guys here in Texas throwing sinkers. But you see that? That's a little cut fastball at 93. He is yet to throw his four seam fastball. A one out base runner for the Astros. We alluded earlier to the fact that Darvish was nearly perfect against Houston back on April 2nd. He retired the first 26 batters he faced. But allows a one-out walk to Wallace here in the first inning. And now Jason Castro, who was named to the American League All-Star team within the last hour. And there you see the four-seamer at 94 miles an hour. When you get... 94 to 98 you can make a mistake. You cannot make a mistake with 89 to 91. Those get hit. Darvish and Castro will be teammates at City Field a week from Tuesday. Castro falls behind nothing in two and you see there 95. Now he can do whatever he wants with him. He can throw him that breaking ball. He's got four opportunities to get him to chase the ball right now. Wallace, the runner on first, one out. Three hits for Castro in last night's game. The 0 2. Slow roller. Moreland gets the out at second. That's a great play by Mitch Moreland right there. That would have been a tough play to turn around and, and throw to Darvish on the run, so he took the sure out where this guy's standing still and Anders at second base. You watch this. There's no way. I mean, he'd have had to turn and pivot. Instead, he throws to the 
still guy at second base because he's a really good play. There's not a lot of first basemen that are real comfortable throwing on the run, and he did a real good job there. So now two away, Castro on it first as Carlos Pena steps in. When you have a young team like Bo Porter does, I'm sure they put their heads together and said, what veteran can we go out and get that would be good for these young kids as he swings through strike one? See, now he's gone to his poor seamer the last couple of hitters. This guy right here, you will not meet a better guy in the clubhouse than Carlos Pena. Originally drafted by the Rangers back in 98. Astros, the youngest team in all of baseball. Pena, their only starter today, over the age of 27. It is Moreland again. Busy first inning for Mitch Moreland as he takes it to the bag himself. And the Astros are retired in the top of the first here in Arlington. But when you look at those numbers, he's going to have to pitch to this Texas Ranger lineup. The, there's not a whole lot of easy outs in this lineup. First pitch, he gets the base hit left field. And the, the scouting report on Dallas Keuchel is just what you just saw there. He's going to give up his hits. He's got to locate his fastball. He does give up a lot of hits. And he can have success if he works ahead in the count where he can mix in his off speed pitches and get these Rangers hitters to chase. But he cannot live in the middle of the plate, that's for sure. Michael making his 11th start this season. Pitched out of the bullpen seven times, record of four and five. Seven and 13 for his career. Elvis Andrews. Back up in the two spot tonight. And, and that's what Elvis has got to do in the two hole. He, he's hit there for so long and been so successful at it. But once Kinsler's on base, when Andrus is at bat is over, Kinsler should be on second.
And you see, he, Keuchel's not going out there with just petrol. He's throwing 89 miles an hour. He's trying to locate. Now he's put himself in a hitter's count, a cripple count, where if they want to put a hit and run on right here, this would be a really good spot to do it. You can see he's going with a slider. Not a real deceptive move to first base. And Kinsler will run. That's the thing about it. He does have to concern himself with with Kinsler at first base and make a good pitch to Anders. Now the 2 0 catching the outside corner 2 and 1. And that's a pitch Kenny during our, our managers meeting with Bo Porter. He said that Keiko had been working on that cut fastball. That's a real good pitch for him right there to backdoor it in a 2 0 count. A hitter is not going to chase that pitch not in that count. Two one low and away. Ball three. Here's Corey Blazer, vacation replacement working behind the plate. Jeff Nelson at first and Hickox at second, and the crew chief Jim Joyce is the third base umpire. Yeah. Kitzler leadoff single. Now Andrews awaits the three one from Keichel. Pretty good time right here for Kinsler to run. Kinsler holds and the count is now full. Well, I would expect him to run here. Elvis is not a guy that punches out a lot. He puts the ball in play. And Keichel doesn't have a very deceptive move, so Kinsler could steal the bag outright anyway, even if he does swing through it. Kinsler goes. Payoff pitch. Strike three. Throw down to second. Is it time or not? I could have been wrong on both ends of that. <laughs> strike him out, throw him out, double play. Real short slide step right there from Keiko. Did a good job of getting the plate, getting the ball to the plate. And Castro will make an extremely strong throw. You watch the slide step here. Kinsler got no jump whatsoever. He's expecting Elvis there to put the bat on the ball. That throw beat him by a long way. The All Star Castro nails Kinsler now two away for Nelson Cruz who will be heading to his second All Star game first since 2009. And you can see a play like that will give Keichel all kinds of confidence now. He had himself in a bad hole. Guy on first, nobody out, 3 1 count. He ends up getting a double play out of it. With this guy Cruz coming to the plate, which you don't want a lot of guys on base when he's up there. You, you see the ball down right there. Good sink on it. And you see Altuve, he ain't the biggest guy in the world. He's one of the few second basemen that doesn't have to bend over to put a tag on. He claims he's five foot six. Well, I claim I weigh 180. Listed officially at 5'5. Five five. Mitch listed it. 192 <laughs> this season. I ain't been 192 since I played here. Cruz with the big blow last night, his sixth career grand slam in the Rangers' 10 5 victory. I'm going sinker away. And, and Cruz is called out on strikes. Really, really good pitch right there. Lead off single, double play, strikeout.
Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. And by Taco Bell, sometimes you got to live boss. Kenny Albert, Mitch Williams back in Arlington. As Hugh Darvish takes the mound here at the top of the second inning. And he does something, Kenny, that you don't see anywhere other than Darvish. He starts the game in his stretch. He did this last year. I, I believe it was a game in Minnesota where he started doing it. And he's never left it. And I completely understand it because the windup should be nothing but a stretch with a step. And this way he can repeat his delivery. And it makes it easier for him. He doesn't have to worry about, okay, I'm throwing out of my windup. I get a guy on now, I get to my stretch. Very easy transition. Facing Mark Kraus, Astros left fielder. One for 14 this season. Second round pick of Arizona back in 2009. Look at his numbers in AAA with Oklahoma City. He's had a hard time hitting so far up at this level. And that was Darvish's change up right there. He's starting to work in it. His secondary pitches more. He wants to establish his fastball most definitely the first time through the order. Two one to Kraus. Ground ball to the shortstop. Andrews. Four out number one. Well, you Darvish started the season seven and one. Only one win over his last eight starts. But as we mentioned, run support from his teammates. Big reason why. Check this out, Mitch. In his eight wins, the Rangers have scored just under 10 runs per game for you, Darvish. And I mean, you would look at that and go, you know, well, anyone can win if somebody's scoring them 10 runs. But when you pitch to a better ERA in your last starts than you did in your first, and you're losing, or you're getting no decisions or losses, with him, it's no decisions. He's throwing the ball. You look at his numbers, they're ridiculous. He's throwing 114 innings out, 114 in the third. And given up 78 hits. He struck out 151. Which leads all of baseball. Ten more strikeouts than Matt Harvey of the New York Mets. That's incredible. Lower earned run average during the last eight starts than the first nine when he went seven and one. Yeah, almost a half a run. And, and when you look at that in your one and two with a two, five, six, and eight starts. And you're going to see him. He keeps trying to get command of his two seam fastball. His four seam fastball, he's been located extremely well. Diving attempt by Borland. Makes it into right field off the bat of Paredes. First bit of the game for the Astros. And, and that's the only problem I have with a guy that has the ability to throw the ball 95, 96. When you get it down around 92, uh, that that pitch is meant to be put in play. And, and you look here at the replay, you see that that is uh, a sinker up. Ultimately, you want the sinker to be hit, hit on the ground, and hope it goes at something. That's why I said one of the in the scouting report, I think he's best when he's throwing his four seam. So a one out base runner for the Astros here. The second is. Darvish throws over to first. Brandon Barnes at the plate 0 for 4 in last night's game. Just one hit in his last 15 at bats. Throw down to second from Soto. He is not in time. Paredes with his fourth steal of the season. And he flat out, he stole that off Darvish. Got a tremendous jump. Soto really didn't have a chance. I'd say 98% of all bases are stolen off the pitcher. Soto, if the throw's on the runner side of the bag, he's probably going to be out. But you see right there, he beat it by a good ways. I want to Barnes. Fastball in for strike two. And that right there is his sinker that he starts off the plate. That swing back to Seamer. 
He needs a punch out right here. And there it is. That's like trying to hit that thing called track ball that we had when we were a kid. First strikeout for you, Darvish, tonight, number 152 on the season. And this is a frisbee. This is kind of unfair. You look at that. That ball starts in the middle. This is what the hitter sees. No, and he missed it by three feet. And now I'm kind of curious to see if they if they, I'd like to see a base hit to the left left field right here on the ground to see Profar charge and come up and make a throw to the plate. Wow. You want to hit that kid? Well, Dominguez actually had success against Darvish in their last meeting. He took him deep twice. And, and I think Darvish remembers that because both times he took him deep, he threw him two same fastballs. And he started him with a breaking ball right there, and it wasn't close. And there's the difference. That's 96 right there. We take it back to May 11th in Houston. Dominguez started the season pitch by going 33 games without a home run. These were his first two of the year. And, and that's exactly why I'm not a big fan of that sinker because if he does get it elevated at 91, 92 miles an hour, it becomes an extremely hittable pitch that hitters can lift out of the park. And Dominguez put two good swings on that. I don't expect Dominguez to see anything hard the rest of this at bat. Runner on second, two outs, top of the second inning. Called strike three. Darvis wins the battle, he strikes out two in the inning. Middle of the second, no score in Arlington. Sports Southwest Fan Express, part of tonight's tribute to the residents and first responders from West Texas, which endured a devastating explosion and fires on April 17th. West Mayor Tommy Buskin threw out the ceremonial first pitch. National Anthem and Color Guard presented by individuals from West Texas. Look at Lance Bergman at Major League Baseball and the Players Association made a donation of $100,000 towards the relief efforts. Scott Pacific on hand. Kevin Bench as well. Rangers wearing a support West patch on the right sleeves of their game jerseys tonight. And those jerseys will be raffled following the game to raise additional funds. And, and I love to see that. I, I like to see the ball players give back. And you, you see the patch right there on the bicep of Beltre.
So a tremendous job prior to the game. As Beltre leads off for the Rangers here in the bottom of the second inning. And that ever happened to you, Mitch? I never had that happen. But I can tell you this, not in a game. But if you've ever been playing catch or anything and hung a spike, you watch it, he'll hang his front heel. See that? That right there is a helpless feeling. The good news is it doesn't mean anything because there's nobody on base. And there were some funky spikes right there. You know, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that happened to you prior to our open tonight <laughs> here in the booth. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time walking. Yeah, and this is earlier this year. Jordan Lyles, same thing. But the problem is there's a guy on third. That cost him a run. This time, base is empty with Beltre leading off the inning. Bounce foul off to the left side. Now two and two on Beltre, who's gone deep three times over the last two games, including his 17th home run of the season last night. 345 career home runs as a third baseman, 363 in all for the 16 year veteran. You know what? I'll tell you this. Kenny, I, I look at this guy. There is not a better defensive third baseman in the game. He's not an all-star. And to me, that baffles me. There's such a log jam at third base and so much talent when you look at Machado in Baltimore. There's some guys that can play the position. And this guy not to be on the, the American League All-Star team is shocking. He has been an all-star each of the last three seasons. Two balls, two strikes. With Lance Berkman waiting on deck. 2-2 two -two from Keichel. Another foul back behind third. And Keichel's been able to get him out on his front foot. With that breaking ball, we'll see him go to his back knee when he swings. We've seen him hit balls out of the ballpark with his back knee on the ground. I mean left field, center field, and right field he's driven the ball out of. He doesn't ever do it on a fastball, only on a breaking ball. We'll check in on the Giants and the Dodgers momentarily. Rangers 14 and 2 this season when Beltre goes deep. And he homered last night. He's fouled off five pitches during this at bat. Uh oh. Deep left center. Beltre in at second with a stand up double. Time for a game break. We head to the MLB Network Studios at Matt Fesker's. Matt. Yeah, Kenny, as you mentioned, Dodgers and Giants. Buster Posey batting with the runner at third and one away. An RBI double, one nothing Giants, right? Well, Don Mattingly comes out to ask if he saw what he thought he just saw. And yes, indeed, the Giants batted out of order. The run comes off the board. They are still scoreless in San Francisco. Kenny, back to you and Mitch. Wow. Wow. That's hard to believe at the big league level. And leave it to Donnie Baseball to be on top of it. Giants batting out of order, so they remain scoreless. Dodgers and Giants. Here's Lance Berkman. Beltre, a leadoff double as Berkman wow. to punt. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but Lance ain't noted for his foot speed, especially at this point in his career. But that a two edge deal right there. Number one, the infield's way back. If he gets it down, he's going to get a knock. A and it would move Beltre up to third. What is more unlikely, a Berkman bunt attempt or the defending world champs batting out of order? Uh, I would say the defending world champs batting out of order. But you saw the panic on Dominguez when he saw him square around. But he's still back there where he was. I, I don't think he's going he's gonna to buy it. He's going to try it twice. Big swing now one and two. And Bo Porter was right on the money as far as what Keichel's doing with that cut fastball. You, you, you don't see a lot of velocity on it, but ever since the double play, the strike him out, throw him out in the first inning, this kid's whole demeanor and confidence has changed. One, two, 
one two to Berkman now two balls two strikes. And I like what Castro is doing behind the plate. I'm not a big fan of catchers move, moving to an extreme to one side or the other or standing up. I always felt like hitters could feel that and you watch Castro he doesn't do anything until the pitch is on the way. Everything's very subtle back there. There's no big move. Left field Kraus. That beats the catch. Tagging heading to third is Beltre. And he is in. And anybody that wants to question whether or not a 16 year veteran still has a thrill of playing this game in his blood. You don't see too many 16 year veterans tag up at second on a fly ball to left field and get third. We're going to watch Beltre right here. He reads it. He knows it's going to be caught. He gets back. It wouldn't surprise me if they appealed this. I think you left too soon. He, it, it was close. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see them appeal this. One away. Here's Borland. We're going to take a look at this replay. You watch him tag. He caught. No, oh, he was good. I'd have done it just because, like I said, he's been playing for 16 years and you wouldn't think he'd get there. Moreland got off to a hot start and then got hurt, and that hurt the Rangers lineup. Now he's just looking for something. You got the infield in here. Moreland's looking for a ball up. In the zone that he can get in the air to the outfield. It doesn't have to be a base hit. This is where teams score their runs. When you can start scoring runs when, when outs are being made, you know you're doing a good job. Now one and two on Moreland. Beltray leadoff double moves to third on the Bergman flyout. No score, bottom of the second inning at Arlington. This is where a young pitcher has to put a lot of trust and belief in his catcher that he can bounce a breaking ball and know that Castro is going to keep it in front of him and not allow that run to score. Pretty good job of pitching right there. Strikeout number three for Dallas Keuchel. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Bud Light, Lime Arena, and introducing new Straw Arena. Now two away with Beltre taking his lead off third as Giovanni Soto steps in. They have him a, a pretty big shift on in the infield. Altuve is almost right behind second base. And the curve is in for a called strike. Soto struggling at the plate. Just two hits in his last 26 at bats as you take a look at that shift in the infield. This is a guy won rookie of the year and really hasn't done much since. I was back in 08 with the Cubs, represented the Cubs in the All Star game at Yankee Stadium that July. He came back in his second year, probably a little overweight, and, and that can happen to when you think this game's good, you've got it figured out, it will teach you in a hurry that you don't. Talk about the pitcher catcher relationship and you Darvish over his two seasons with Soto behind the plate is 10 and 1. And you look at that, Kenny, and I played with a guy in Greg Maddox who very seldom threw to an everyday catcher. He had his own little ballet going. Soto sets this one to deep left center. Catch is made by Kraus, and that will end the inning. When we come back, we will chat with A.J. Pierzynski. Gets a vote tonight with Soto, Captain Darvish.
Williams, no score as Jake Elmore steps in to lead off against you, Darvish. Elmore batting 212 in 10 games this season, seven hits in 33 at bats. As we are joined live from the Rangers dugout by a familiar the face and voice here on Fox, AJ Przinsky. AJ, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. I don't know what camera to look at, though. On Fox, I always say look at the camera. I just you don't look, know which one. You look best when you're not looking at any of them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're looking out at the mound, AJ, your impressions this season, first year as the teammate of you, Darvish, he's heading to a second straight All Star game. Uh, he deserves it. And uh, obviously, the strikeout numbers, I was waiting for that, by the way. The strikeout numbers are what they are, but he also has. His better numbers, he should have a better record. We haven't scored some runs. We've missed out on some runs. But obviously, Derek Holland has to play with me as I do an interview at all costs. But uh, you deserves it. His numbers could be a lot better if we could just find a way to score some runs. We've had a trouble, uh, a hard time scoring him from runs. He's lost some games one nothing and 2-1 to one and stuff like that. But he's pitched like an all-star pitcher and like an ace guy should. Elmore sends this one to deep left center. Long run Whoa. for Martino. He makes the uh. catch. Mitch, right there is why I want to know what it's like to be fast just one time. Just to hey, know what that feeling is like. AJ, I am so with you on that. It's not <laughs> even funny. You watch the jump he gets on this ball right here. Immediately on a dead run. It took me one step to be full speed because I was really slow. I, AJ would outrun me. I don't know. Now let's. Uh, I'll take that race. Maybe next time we have you can come down and, and we can race. Oh, buddy, you'll win. Trust me. <laughs> I got to speed up to stop. <laughs> I, if you notice, though, Profar, Profar was calling for Leonis to catch it the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we talked about this is his first game ever in left field. Is he that good an athlete, AJ? He's a pretty good athlete. I tell you what, what is he, 20, maybe 21? Uh, I wish I was in the big leagues at 20, 19 years old like he was. But he can play anywhere. He's got the ability. Uh, I don't know if he's going to uh, to wow you in any of them, but he's just very solid. I mean, he, he, he can make all the plays. He's played short for us. He's played second for us. Now he's played left. He's DH for us. So I mean, there's a lot of places he can play and a lot of things he can do that are special. Now, AJ, let me ask you something. When I saw first saw that you signed with the Texas Rangers, knowing you, knowing your personality and the way you play the game as hard as you play it, how do you think these fans here in Texas appreciate that? It's been great so far. These fans have been awesome so far. Derek, that's why. Right there. <laughs> Uh, they've been great. I mean, I can't I can't say anything. But talk. I mean, look, every time we come to the park, we have 40,000 fans here. They cheer. They know when to cheer. They know when to boo. They know when to get on you. They know when to, to be happy. Uh, and that's all you can ask for as a player. You know that, Mitch. Uh, yeah. You want the people that know what they're talking about. They know what to, what to be happy about, what to be mad about. And they've done a great job of coming out and supporting us for the last three years, and especially this year. I mean, every time we look up, there's 40 some thousand fans. Altuve down on strikes. Third strikeout for... You Darvish, AJ All-Star game coming up a week from Tuesday. You've been selected for two. What's the best part, at least in your mind, when you think back to those All-Star games, just being a part of the festivities? Well, being a part of it and, and, and being into the locker room, you walk in with the players like Derek Jeter and, and these guys that have been there. And, and you, as a kid coming up, and my first one in 2002, and you're like, wow, I'm on, the, I'm in the same locker room as some of these guys that I grew up, you know, Idolizing and being like, man, I really want to be like him. And now I'm in the same locker room and playing with him and against him. And that's the coolest thing. And then I think after that, it's just being in the game and realizing how special the game is. I know it it means home field advantage, but at the same time, it's supposed to be fun. And I think guys look at it, the players, they're competitive, but they still want to have fun because it, that's what it's about. It's about having fun and enjoying the moment. And, and, and my second one, I didn't get to play, so that was even better because I really got to enjoy it. Hey, Jay, we just showed a graphic of career batting averages for active catchers and you are like fourth or fifth on that list and you don't see that very often I talk all the time about guys that catch 130 135 games a year it is hard to keep your legs under you for an entire year when you squat behind that plate how important is it to have your legs to hit uh, legs are number one uh, you have to have a firm base uh, pitching or catching or doing anything in this game if your legs are weak you're going to be weak every other part of your game so uh, I've been very fortunate. I've had great strength coaches, great trainers that have worked with me and kind of taught me over the years how to keep them in shape and be ready. Uh, days I don't play like today, I get a nice uh, kind of flush workout, cardio, and we have some uh, other techniques we use to kind of just refresh my legs. And, and I've been lucky. I've had a lot of guys. The, the guy in Chicago where I was for eight years was great. Uh, Alan Thomas, the guy here, Posey's great about just knowing how to get me ready for the games when I am playing, when I'm not playing. 
They didn't work on any speed drills with you? No, I'm out of speed drills. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we can improve my speed. I think it's a little late for that at this point. That's why Craig Biggio wasn't a catcher. Wallace in at second with a two out double. No, I think Biggio wasn't a catcher because he had to hit the cutoff man to second. <laughs> I thought it was because he was fast. They wanted him to steal base. He ended up with 3,000 hits, so I think he made the right decision. Yeah, Beige wasn't known for his arm. <laughs> I, did, I remember seeing photos of him catching. It was kind of like when Mike Sweeney caught for the Royals. I remember seeing it, but I don't remember it lasting very long. Well, Wallace on at second as Castro steps in. And AJ, you've been a big part of Fox's postseason coverage the last two years. I assume you hope that you are not available come. That would, be, this year. that would be the grand plan, I think, uh, to, to not be a part of it. But you guys you know, having to interview me, having to, having Rosenthal chase me around the locker room trying to get to talk to me, that's the best. Is when Ken starts panicking, when there's, you're not on time or there's an interview not right on time and, and hearing him in, in your headset saying, I can't find the guy. I can't find, he won't, he's he's going to be late. We're going to have to press. We're going to have to press. Find a way to waste time. And the guys on the set, Karos and myself and the other guys are like, oh, no, well, how are we going to fill you know, another minute and a half after doing it for 20 minutes already? So. Uh, hopefully you guys are looking for me to interview and that would be that's the ultimate goal is to play in the postseason. Well Kenny can hide easier than anybody. <laughs> he can hide behind a coke can. Well the bow tie though you see the bow tie out the sides. That's yeah. the problem. He's one of my favorite people. Kenny is Kenny is one of the best. Uh, he, he knows his stuff and he knows what to write what not to write and uh, I tell you what he's like a little bulldog though man if he thinks he's got a sniff of information he won't let it go until he gets it out of that person. That's a fact. Absolutely. Castro steps out. Two outs. Wallace the runner on second. AJ, I've, I've set up here tonight. I, I like Darvish more when he uses his four seam fastball more. I mean, he's got the ability to throw 96, 97 miles an hour, and he throws a lot of two seam fastballs. Do you have an opinion on that? Well, you is different than most other pitchers, Mitch. Uh, he goes off field, he pitches off 100% off field. And you can sit down with him and have a game plan. And at the end of the day, he might walk out there and not feel like it and do something different. And you see him having a meeting right here. I guarantee you, they, Gio had something in mind. You had something else in mind. And, and they always get on the same page. I think he was good about understanding and listening. But at the end of the day, he was going to throw what you wants to throw. And as a catcher, and Gio and I have both been around. We've talked about it. You have to understand that. And he's had success. So how can you argue with it? Uh, I'd love for him to use his fastball. We tell him all the time, you throw 95, 96 miles an hour, you get guys out with that. But then again, he's got three or four other pitches that are just as good. So, I mean, he does throw a split finger at 95 also. Wow. One, two to Castro and Darvish misses high. How about the communication with you, AJ? Oh, I speak fluent Japanese. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's easy for me to, to, to Kenichiwa with him. Yeah. Sushi is a <laughs> limitation of your Japanese. No, uh, no for, I mean, I, I, there's some things that, that I understand, but you speak pretty good. Uh, fortunately for me, he speaks pretty good English that I can, that we can communicate a little bit, uh, especially pitching wise. But he, he understands most of the time what's going on and how to come on, pro. Oh, yeah, there you go. And that's the one I was worried about the ball right at him. First opportunity for Pro Far in left, and he makes the catch all smiles. AJ, as always. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the game. One more look. Jurickson Pro Farm in left.
know it, Jurickson Profar leads off for the Rangers after his first opportunity as an outfielder. And you know what? We were talking to Wash before the game and what area of the outfield he was worried about. Wash said not any of them. That right there was the one I was worried about. The, the ball hit directly at you is it, it tends to make you freeze. He froze and closed on it really well. Profar, Martin, and Kinsler for the Rangers here in the bottom of the third inning. As we are joined live from the Astros dugout by their hitting coach, John Maley. John, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. Well, thanks for having me. Pitch from Keichel, missing away. Now one and one. John, you worked with such a young team, youngest average age in all of baseball. How has it gone for you so far this season, your first year with the Astros? Great. You know, the new, um, learning all the new guys and their first year in the big leagues, a lot of them. Um, you know, they're making adjustments and learning how people are pitching them and getting used to uh, different they're, pitchers in the league. They're going to call him out right there, Kenny. He was out of the runner's lane. They're going to call him out. Not to interrupt you there, John. Sorry about that, but that was blatant right there. You can see, we'll watch a replay. You'll see Profar on the grass. See that box to the right? That's where he's supposed to be, so he's out. Throw hit Profar. He is ruled out. Sorry for the interruption, John. No problem. John, I got to ask you, when you got young guys on this team, and obviously you guys are loaded with them, uh, we've talked with Bo Porter about the approach. What are you teaching to guys like Matt Dominguez? Because obviously his power stroke has come. Castro swung the bat really well. Yeah, we, we talked about, you know, selective aggressive hitting and attacking, you know, pitching your strength early in the count and strike zone and taking everything else within the strike zone. And uh, with younger hitters, they get up here and they get a little excited. Uh, they're, they're not patient enough. And, and that doesn't mean that you take to be patient. That means you, you're ready to attack your strength. Um, if you look at you, Darvish tonight, we're trying to elevate the zone on him, and you know he does a lot of chase with two strikes. We're actually trying to make him get the ball up with two strikes. Um, but with these young guys, just learning their strengths, them understanding, you know, their strengths within their swing, and also uh, how the opposing pitchers are trying to get them out. John, you work with Bo Porter and the Marlins organization. You won't find many managers who are as enthusiastic as Bo. Oh, the energy he has is tremendous. You know, you need that with a young group. You know, he's, you know, he's patient as well, but he, he's very competitive. Um, and win or lose, if you play the game the right way, you do the fundamentals right, he'll hold you accountable for that, um, playing the game right. And uh, he's tremendous with that. And, and I think all the young players here, they feed off him because this is a tough environment we're in. And we know that uh, he's got our back, and um, he's very supportive of these young guys. John, it's got to be tough. I, I mean, you guys are 20 games out right now. You guys are in the process of building towards the future and, and you're a big part of that especially being a hitting coach is it fun for you to come and see these guys progress yeah no question and, you know signing up for it you knew it was going to be an uphill battle but when you see improvements and like Chris Carter and Dominguez and Jason um, you see the improvements day in and day out you know those those type of guys should be the core of of the future here and um, to see them improve and, and learn how to make adjustments during the course of the bat or during the course of the series uh, it's been it's been a blast for me. Nothing and two on Ian Kinsler as we chat with Astros hitting coach John Bailey. Scoreless game, bottom of the third inning. Kinsler singled his first time up, and then was caught attempting to steal second. John Jason Castro named to the All Star game. He will represent the Astros. Was there any kind of celebration of the clubhouse when when Jason learned the news prior to the game? Yeah, um, the manager. Uh, had him, uh, he introduced the, uh, the fact that he had made the all-star team and uh, it, was, it was surreal for all of you. We were so happy for him and then to listen to uh, Jason get up and talk to his teammates and say that he couldn't do it without them and their support and uh, working together with him. Um, it was great. It, it's got to be satisfying. Like I was saying earlier to watch this kid come back from the bad knee surgery get his legs back under him and Bo talked about the not only behind the plate but when he's got the bat in his hand you can't play this game if you if you don't have a lower half no question and part of his issue with his lower half he had two issues the sequence was off with his lower half and, and it's because of the injury um, he, he couldn't hit into his front side where he could keep the bat in his own and stay through the ball to the opposite field uh, he'd hit the ground and his front side would go and he'd swing to his upper body and he'd get disconnected get out around the balls and 
he top spin the ball to his pull side and he couldn't hit through the ball the other way. Now you see his power to left center truly increase um, because he's able to stay through that ball because he's getting into his front side, not around it. Full count, three balls, two strikes. With two outs, bottom of the third inning here in Arlington. Well, John, I can tell you this. I think I'm a pretty good hitting coach because both games I've done this year, he's gone deep in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can come down here and help me out then. You can be my assistant. I can throw in BP. Oh, no. I throw <laughs> really good BP. That's why I retired. You're, you're like all the other pitching coaches I've ever had. <laughs> when a pitching, when, when a, a pitcher is, is uh, a coach and he's throwing batting practice, the guy hits a couple balls hard, then you're going to try to get him out and cut it and sink it. And that's not what we're looking for. And you know you'll do that. You, you, you know, I, you saw me pitch. I don't know how to cut it or sink it. Yeah. You threw it, it cut and sink on its own. And that, that's what you'd be doing with BP. And they, they wouldn't be happy with Well, John, we thank you for taking a couple of minutes and joining us during the bottom of the third inning. Considered success. Thank you, guys. I think you do a great job. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right, John Maley, the first year hitting coach with the Astros. Kinsler on at first, following a two out walk. Andrews at the plate. Struck out his first time up. Well, Kinsler has got to look for a pitch to run right here. If you get thrown out, so what? You got Elvis leading, leading off the next inning. This is a time Kinsler has got to use his speed and get into scoring position. One oh from Keichel now one and one. I'll tell you what since the first hitter of the game. The first two hitters I mean he came back and got Andrews the first time and punched him out. On the strike him out throw him out but from. Kinsler. On after the first inning Keichel has been in complete command. Fastball away again. And that's that cutter. At 90 miles an hour. That's a pretty good pitch. In my opinion, Kinsler has to run right here. It doesn't matter if he gets thrown out. Then Elvis gets to start the at bat over. He's in a hole, one and two. This is where a base runner either gets in scoring position or he bails a hitter out. Kinsler holds and Andrews grounds out to the first baseman Wallace bring it into the books in Arlington.
Rich Tash for the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. And by Ford, only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. We move to the fourth yeah. inning in Arlington, and before the game, Mitch, you and I discussed our Ford keys to the game. Yeah. Here they are. Yes, we did write these before the game. Keiko can't walk anyone. So far, he's only walked one guy. That's been great. The Rangers have to hit with runners in scoring position. You see their 24th in Major League Baseball. 0 for 3 today so far with runners in scoring position. And the other key, Jerson Profar. Easy catch in left yeah. field on the first ball hit to him as an outfielder. I'll tell you what, he'll he'll never forget that play. But when you're an athlete, you're an athlete. I, I truly believe that. If you can play, if you're an athlete, you can play anywhere on the field. The only places that are difficult, I think, pitching and catching. That's two things that those are specialty positions. But if you're an athlete, I think you can play anywhere. Well, for our check out his surroundings. Pena grounded out to the first baseman, Moreland, his first time up. And this is one guy right here, Pena. He hunts a fastball. He's always been a guy that struck out a lot, but he always does damage. Home runs and RBIs. But you can definitely elevate the fastball. Take you back to the ball hit by Castro back in the third inning. And, and you look at that play, and this is what I love. I love the teammate. Watch Beltre. <laughs> I feel so bad for the kid. Number one, you're playing your first game in the outfield, and it's the Sun Field. That's not an easy task. Two to the Pena, off his fist, foul back. 285 career home runs for Carlos Pena. The other eight Astros in their starting lineup today have combined for 73. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. When you look at this. In this, like I said, Carlos will punch out. Darvish can do two things here. He can elevate the ball in the middle because Pena will chase or backdoor his breaking ball. They're going in, so he's probably going to throw that slider down and in. And that right there, that's a 95 mile an hour fastball. Anything, I don't care if you throw it 105, it hits down, it's hittable. You have to elevate it. Rangers have the infield shift on. Three infielders to the right of second base. Going back in with the fastball. And you can see he's just not hitting his spots at all right now. He's having trouble commanding. He missed that right there by three feet. Which I, I'm not, I can't really be too critical of. I missed things by eight feet. <laughs> and you know, 0 for 9 lifetime against Darvish. Now they're going to the back foot slider. Eighth pitch of the at bat. On one hop, it is Kitzler. One away. Time for another game break. Take it away, Matt Veskersian. Kenny, we've got a game break between the Rail Riders and the Iron Pigs. That's because Derek Jeter's making his first rehab start at shortstop for the Yankees AAA club in Scranton. He is hitless with a base on balls in that first day back, expected to play five innings tonight as we send it back out to you and Mitch. All right, thanks, Matt. And Michael Pineda, the ex mariner starting that game for Scranton. So Derek Jeter, first rehab start in AAA. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a typical Jeter swing inside out hit the ball hard getting Jeter back is going to be big getting Pineda back if he is healthy is going to be huge here's a base hit into right field off the bat of Mark Krause his second major league base hit by the way when we checked in with Matt earlier told us about the mix up Giants batting out of order not mattingly realized it and the run was taken off the board our Ken Rosenthal has tweeted 
that day for Getty, the Giants pitching coach, who joined the broadcast. And Rigetti explained that the Giants players saw the wrong lineup posted on a quote newfangled electronic scoreboard in their clubhouse. Oh man. Yeah, see that that new stuff? There's a lot of guys, including myself. I'd have to have my kids read it. I don't know on anything about those electronics. My phone, I'm pretty tickled and I can answer it. But everything, I go in clubhouses today, Kenny. It's amazing. I mean, people. Guys have computers mounted in their lockers. Much easier to watch video than back in your day. Oh yeah, uh, we had one room, the video room, where we go. Now these guys can watch it in their lockers. They can pull up at bats. They can watch on their iPads. Yeah. I remember back in '92 when they came out with the first cellular phones, and it was like hauling my house phone around. It. Talk to kids today, and they don't know what life was like before cell phones. No, I, I mean it's silly. My nine-year-old has one. When I was nine years old, we, we used to fight to not answer the phone. And now Darvish is in a situation. He he's looking for a ground ball, double play. This is where I I think you use the two-seam sinker when it calls for it. When you're in a situation where you need a ground ball, but I don't believe in using it exclusively. Not when you have 96 and 97. Paredes singled his first time up. Darvish missing high and away. Now two and one. And all he's doing, he's getting a little quick because he's worried about the base runner running, and his lower half is kind of running off and leaving it. That's why those balls are up in the zone. See Keichel, he throws out of a slide step when he's in the stretch, which I cannot stand. I don't believe in sacrificing stuff and, and risking injury because it's hard, especially as you get older, for your arm to catch up and your arm gets stuck behind you and ends up being a muscle move. One drive caught. Kraus back in at first. After the catch by Kinsler. I tell you what, that ball had some serious top spin on it. Kinsler jumped like it was going to be over his head and he ended up catching about shoulder high. That ball was smoked. Oh, I guess he did catch it up over his head. So Paredes is retired. Now two away for Brandon Barnes, who struck out his first time up. Jason joined us late. Three Texas Rangers named to the American League All-Star team. New Darvish, closer Joe Nathan, and Nelson Cruz. Tanner Shepherds, one of the five American leaguers who will be part of the final vote, fan vote. And Jason Castro will represent the Astros. I'll tell you what, Tanner Shepherds is making a name for himself in the setup role. He's going to make a heck of a closer one day. Second all-star selection for Darvish. Nathan heading back home. Cruz with the grand slam last night. His second all-star appearance. And Shepard's a final vote candidate. Uh, and you look, Joe Nathan's having an outstanding year. 28 saves for Nathan. Franchise record for saves prior to the all-star break. The American League candidates for the final vote. You see Steve Delabar right there. He's done an outstanding job out of the pen for the Blue Jays. Robertson, a perennial outstanding setup guy. Left field, pro far back, looks up, it is gone. Two run home run. Brandon Barnes is fourth of the season. The Astros lead 2 0.
And you heard Maley, their, their hitting coach, talk about making Darvish elevate the ball. And when you make it a guy that's throwing sinkers elevated, this is what happens. We're going to look at the swing. That right there is actually elevated. That's a two seamer. Again, it's going to be around 91 to 92 miles an hour. In that situation, that's where you got to go for the strikeout. In in my opinion. But in today's game, Kenny, with the pitch count being what it is, every pitcher is so concerned with the pitch count that strikeouts are like a, a sin anymore. Can you imagine Nolan Ryan going to the mound and not thinking about punching somebody out off because he's concerned about his pitch count? Thought about it 5,714 <laughs> times. Yeah. I will always be a big believer. It, it ain't how many, it's how. As long as me mechanically they're sound, I don't care if they're throwing 110 or 150, if they're still delivering the ball mechanically sound, they're fine. One, two to Dominguez, fouls it off. And that's that 90 mile an hour split that we heard AJ Brzezinski talking about earlier. This goes right back to what you talked about uh, about his run support. You know, he's given up two runs. Rangers have scored him none. The big edge down on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Darvish, but the Astros have taken the lead. Number four of the season off the bat of Brandon Barnes. Two nothing Houston. The Rangers 2 0, bottom of the fourth inning, as Nelson Cruz leads off against Dallas Keuchel. Cruz leading all American League outfielders in home runs and runs batted in this season. You, you see that old school there, Kenny? No batting gloves. His hands are probably like leather. And this is what Keichel, right now, Keichel needs to throw up a goose egg. A shutdown inning is what we call it. And 
when his team gets him two runs, he needs to go out there and throw up a zero. Bob Biducci and I worked the Tigers Rays game last week. Will Myers, the outstanding rookie with Tampa Bay, has never worn batting gloves. Yeah. Now, I, I play with Mark Grace. He never wore them. He didn't wear them in Chicago in April when it was freezing. There's some guys that just don't feel comfortable hitting them. That it certainly worked for Nelson Cruz. Well, now he's got Keiko in a cripple count. He's sitting on one pitch. Keiko should throw in that changeup again. And he did. Kind of a, he, he sunk it. Had real good downward movement on it. And we heard John Maley talk about the Astros hitters wanting to get Darvish up in the zone. This is exactly what the Rangers have to do. They have to make this kid get the ball up in the zone. Time is called by the home plate umpire Corey Blazer. Keiko grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In fact, he attended a number of Rangers games as a youngster. Kansas City Royals games as well. Mm. Up the middle. Wow. Base hit center field. Nelson Cruz. That scared me. That's the one thing about being a pitcher. You're 60 feet 6 inches from a guy that's that strong. I don't know how he got out of the way of this. This is what the pitcher is seeing. I don't know how that missed it. But he better be glad he's a little dude. What was the worst place you ever got hit? I took a 102 mile an hour line drive off my head. Who hit it? Do you remember? Jeff King. You don't forget who hit him, believe me. It hit me in the head, and our third baseman, Vance Law, stopped it from going in the third base dugout wow. in Pittsburgh. And Zim pitched me the next day. See, that's where they want to get him. They want to get him elevating both his his cutter, his fastball, and his changeup. Beltre doubled his first time up. Now, did you see? You, you saw how Beltre kind of jumped back on that first pitch called strike that was on the inner third. That's a 16 year veteran trying to talk this kid into coming back in there again. He's going with the slider. Ouch. Yeah, and you, you look at Adrian Beltre's rankings since 2010 for a third baseman. Uh, that's a lot of firsts in one second. Home runs, RBIs, doubles, hits. No third baseman had more than him since 2004. And he's got to the All-Star game in 2010, 11, and 12. No surprise. And should be in 13. But there's always going to be somebody. And there it is right there. Oh, just foul. He talked him coming in and back inside there. And that's a game that goes on within the game. You see hitters talk pitchers into throwing pitches. They'll duck a curveball. Castro setting up in there. And you see him. That's the same pitch that he kind of pulled off in the first pitch of the at bat. Ball two strike count. Cruz the runner on first. No outs. Bottom of the fourth inning with the Astros ahead 2 0. This is where Keiko just needs to take a deep breath, make the pitch he wants to make, and see if he can get a ground ball. You have a tendency, okay, I'm, I'm deeper and getting deeper and deeper in this count. I'm going to try and just 
throw something that I'm comfortable with, but you can't give in. You got to keep trying to make a pitch, especially with the middle of this order. Deep center. Number one in trap. Catch is made by Barnes. They're out number one. And, and that's where we got to see Adrian Beltre drop to his back knee, which tells you curveball or a changeup. In, in that situation, it was a changeup. We talked about that earlier in the game, how he has the ability to go to his back knee and hit balls out of the park. He didn't miss that by much. So with one away, here's Lance Berkman. Wide out to the left fielder, Kraus. His first time up. First pitch, ground ball to the third baseman, Dominguez. Get the out at second. And Berkman beats the throw. I tell you what, Berkman got down the line pretty good right there. Anytime you see Gray in the beard, you don't expect him to run very good, but you look at him. He drops his head and takes off. Remember, he attempted to butt his way on his first time up back in the second inning. And he got it down. It yeah, now he's either out of breath or he's hurt. It is not fun getting hurt. But he can still hit. He did miss four games earlier this week with the sore right knee. Following an incident heading down the steps off the team airplane. If you're getting hurt getting off a plane, <laughs> something's not right. And something happened right there with Keiko's plant foot. Castro out for a chat. He will be headed to City Field for the All Star Game. It's sports' biggest event of the summer in New York. The festivities begin on Monday, July 15th, with the Home Run Derby on ESPN. Then on Tuesday, the 16th, the Midsummer Classic kicks off with the Red Carpet Show on MLB Network, followed by the 2013 MLB All Star Game at 7:30 Eastern, right here on Fox. Well, Mitch, you noticed something with Keuchel's plant foot, and now. Yeah, medical staff heads out to the mound. Yeah, Bo Porter and, and the trainer's gone out there. He reached down and grabbed it. And I don't know what could have happened with it. Unless a spike hung, which is very odd for that to have happened. Now they're, I didn't see anything there. But he definitely didn't want to put it down. Okay, now you. you they're filling in the hole. He's got a pretty, pretty good sized hole out there. I used to hate to come in where there was a big hole. I, I would do everything I could to fill it in. And you see, he throws from the third base side of the rubber. Keichel says he is all right. Gets set to face Mitch Moreland, who struck out his first time up. The Rangers have done a pretty good job of getting the leadoff hitter on tonight. They just haven't done anything after that. Leadoff fan has reached down three of the first four innings. Rangers scored 10 last night. 10 5 win in the series opener. They've won six straight over the Astros. Well, and the Astros are going to be the basically what decides the American League West. The A's are nine and zero oh against them. Now ball to the shortstop Elmore to retire Moreland. We head to the fifth in Arlington. Two nothing Astros.
Astros medical staff after closing out the bottom of the fourth inning. And I look down in the pen, they don't have anybody throwing, so I'm guessing he's going back out there. Jake Elmore leads off for Houston against you, Darvish. First pitch, long foul down the right field line. Elmore fly to center his first time up. Martin made a terrific play. And they're taping. You know what? I do, this is a guess. Where you would get a bunion on your foot, every time I pitched, I ripped that skin off. And that's exactly where they're wrapping. He might have ripped that skin off. He's putting his sock back on now. It got to the point, I mean, you just get used to it. One and two on Elmore. He started to talk about the role the Astros will play in the American League West race. 0-9 against Houston, but they've gone seven and six against the Angels. Yeah, and, and that absolutely is going to be a huge factor in who wins the West. The A's lost earlier today, so the Rangers in a virtual tie for the division lead. They can actually go back into first place if they can come back and win this game. But when you're Oakland and you've won all nine games you've played against the Astros, and that's what baseball is, you have got to win the games you're supposed to win. When you play 162 of them, you've got to win the ones you're supposed to win. As you see the slider that throws him right there. Fifth strikeout for you, Darvish. That's 156 strikeouts on the season. And that matches Kerry Wood back in 2003. For the moment, they are tied for the most strikeouts in baseball prior to the All Star game over the last decade. I mean, you look at that. I mean, the All Star game is obviously later. It's not halfway through the season. But you got 156 punch outs, and we're in the early part of July. He's got a shot at 300. Now, two they struck out his first time up. And that's what I like to see. That four seam fastball elevated in the middle of the plate. You can see he fouled that straight back and people at home a lot of even pitchers in the game think of a hitter fouls the ball straight back. He's on it. He's not. He's late. Oh. Soto's running out of fingers back there. <laughs> Five. Six. <laughs> when, when you have to use the finger sticking out of your glove. Fastball away. Here it comes the 0-2. Altuve, deep center field. Martin looks up. He's got it. For out number two. And see, that's a difference right there. He elevated that fastball, but it had a little more on it. If that's a two-seamer elevated, that ball's hit out of the park. First baseman Brent Wallace. I don't. That right there, you see him using his finger and his glove. I don't know what six is. He would have only needed one finger with me. I normally just got the sign forward is good. But Darvish, did they claim he has seven pitches? I can't even think of seven pitches. Where does the seven finger come from? Exactly. Here's Wallace. Wallace has reached base twice, walked in the first, doubled in the third. And you look at Soto right there. I mean, you'll see a, a catcher do his index finger in a circle if he wants a sinker or a one for a fastball, three for a slider. He actually flashes three fingers and, and pumps them up and down. I don't know what that is. It's an off speed slider. That's his curveball at 68 right there. Well, they have worked well together, Darvish and Soto. I mean, there's no question. They, see that right there? He's. That's got to be an off-speed slider. He's all, well, not at 91 miles an hour, it ain't. So I don't know what that is. Now 
a 2 1 to Wallace and Darvish misses away ball three. And I, I think with Wallace at the plate the best thing you can do like I said anytime you get a hitter with a leg kick. You want to upset the timing of that leg kick and when he gets that foot down. So that 68 mile an hour curveball is a good thing. They lost him with another cutter away. So Wallace walks for the second time. You know, we talked to AJ Brzezinski earlier about his communication with Darvish, and AJ said that his English is, is pretty good. His interpreter is Kenji Nomura, who used to be Hiroki Kuroda's interpreter with the Dodgers and the Yankees last year. Nomura also does some work for the Rangers in baseball operations. He wanted to expand his role, came to Texas. Here's Kenji. And the interpreter who worked with Darvish last season now works for Corona in New York. <laughs> so an exchange of interpreters between the two Japanese pitchers. And, and you know what, Kenny? That's a great thing because we're starting to see more and more international players in this in the major leagues. And that's a good thing. Our game has grown worldwide. Bud Selig, I think, has done a tremendous job of doing just that, growing our game on a global basis. And we're seeing people from everywhere now at the big league level. Castro up the middle for a base hit. Wallace to second. And the Astros have two on with two out here in the fifth inning. And we heard John Maley talking about being able to hit into your front side. That's a perfect example of hitting into your front side. Your front side has got to be stiff. Your front leg has got to get stiff at some point. And if you watch Castro right here, watch the bend. Boom, it's stiff right there. That's hitting into your front side. That's what enables you to generate bat speed. We asked Paul Porter before the game who has been the biggest surprise. He did not hesitate. Immediately said Jason Castro. Yeah. Anytime you go through a knee injury, and he said it, it not only affected the way he hit, the way he blocked balls, but also the way he called the game. And a lot of people won't understand how a knee injury could affect the way you call a game. Simple. If you call for a slider and you want it down, you have to be ready to block that pitch. And he wasn't able to do it. Carlos Pena 0 for 2. 0 for 10 lifetime against you, Darvish. And that pitch is a big reason why. Anytime Darvish reaches back, and tries to get a little extra with his four seamer. Payne is a guy that wants to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Throw down to second, and Wallace is back in. I hope they call that pitch a strike. Wow. We're going to look at this pitch right here. If Soto doesn't come up to throw, you're sitting in an 0 2 count right here. And for people at home that wonder why they would throw down on a guy like Wallace, he's got to be able to, he's got to get a good secondary lead in order to score on a single. Wow, watch out. I think it smacked the camera down there in the camera well. Oh, did it get the lens? Wow. That photographer is not going to be happy. But I'm pretty sure they don't show that. Better than the alternative. <laughs> no kidding. One ball, two strike count. Two out, two out. And Darvish has got to be anywhere but the strike zone right here. And you see Soto saying, stay back, stay back, make the pitch. Two and two. And again, that's that's the two seam. If he could throw that 68 mile an hour curveball right here, he'd have a really good chance. New lens needed. Yeah. Two from Darvish, full count. That's a nasty strip from him. 
just wasn't in the air long enough for the hitter to offer at it, but he buried that pitch good. And he's got a guy at the plate that's over 10 lifetime off him, and, and a guy on deck that he's only faced twice, and he's got one hit across. Runners go, payoff pitch to Pena. Ball four, says Jim Joyce. Second walk of the inning issued by Darvis. Base for loaded. Here comes Mike Maddox. And he's going to walk out and put his hand on Darvish's shoulder to feel the tension in his shoulders. There it is. Yeah. So Maddox chatting with Darvish. We remind you that Chevrolet is the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, celebrating a new season for new memories for your chance to win a community field makeover and an all new 2014 Impala visit Chevy Baseball. Dot com. So Maddox taking the temperature of Darvish who will now pitch to Mark Kraus with the bases loaded. And with the pitch count being what it is today and they put so much emphasis on it. Nolan Ryan I know is trying to get his pitches out of that. Well Darvish is at 89 pitches through four and two thirds. First pitch fouled off. Kraus. One for two today. Two for 16 on the season. He has home run power. Got a single season record at Ohio University back in 2009 with 27 home runs. Darvish retired the first two Astros in this inning. But the last three have reached base on a single and two walks. And we're going to find out just what kind of patience Kraus has. Young player, bases loaded. He's looking out there saying, I got all these RBIs sitting out there. First career at bat with the bases loaded. Is he going to be a guy that you can throw the rosin bag to with the bases loaded, or is he going to make the pitcher work? No runs batted into the major leagues for Mark Kraus. Big opportunity here in the fifth against an all star and you, Darvish. Pop foul off to the left side now one and two. Darvish threw 22 pitches pitch in the fourth inning. He has already thrown 25 here in the fifth. And, and these are what they call stress innings. He needs to end this inning right here. And he can do it. If he can elevate his four seamer in the middle of the play, this kid will not be able to lay off because number one, he's young. Number two, he wants his first big league RBI. A well, one two, base hit into right field. Kraus has his first career run batted in and his second. Throw to second. Safe is Kraus. Astros lead 4 0. And, and that's the one thing Darvish couldn't do right there. He has to stay out of the strike zone. I know the bases are loaded. But he's got three pitches to get him to chase. He's got to know he's a young kid, and this slider is hung right down the middle. Really good job. You see, Kraus stay on that ball, head on the ball. And, and you see that. Andrus should have been over in. I, number one, I don't know what he's doing at the bag at second base. He should have been the cutoff man on that play to third. So Mark Krause drives in the first two runs of his big league career. Moves to second on the throw. So Darvish will retire the first two of this inning. Has allowed four consecutive Astros to reach. And he's got to throw the brakes on this inning right now or he's going to be on a, another short end of a, a ball game where he's going to get an L. Because at this rate he might not be around if the Rangers do mount a rally. 
Paredes one for two single and stole second back in the second inning. And that's how Darvish has got to view this right now. He's got to stop the bleeding right now get back in the dugout. Because the one thing that is the bugaboo for the Astros their ERA and their bullpen is the highest in Major League Baseball. So if they can get to the pen which they will. Number one you got a starter that's got a problem with his plant foot. He's a young guy they're going to monitor his pitch count. They're going to get to their bullpen. Josh Lindblom up in the Rangers pen. Second and third two outs. Two runs in here in the fifth. Two and two. And that right there is what I'm talking about about youthful hitters. That pitch at no point. In the delivery was a strike. How often do you see a hitter pull sunflower seeds out of his back pocket during hit back? Not very often. I mean, he's either really relaxed or thinking about the wrong thing. One of the two. Parade is down on strikes. But he will head back to the dugout, not hungry. Yeah, he's gonna have a full belly. First two runs batted in for Kraus. Does it against Darvish? Four nothing Astros. Kenny Albert, Mitch Williams in Arlington, bottom of the fifth inning. Astros lead the Rangers 4 0. There is Mark Kraus, who drove in the first two runs of his big league career, extending the Houston lead. And now Giovanni Soto takes a called strike. Dallas Keuchel back out to the mound here in the fifth. Made his major league debut in this ballpark just over a year ago, June 17th of last season. Allowed one run in five innings and then at his next start pitched a complete game against the Cleveland Indians. And you know, you know what Kenny Keuchel is doing exactly what the Astros want him to do. 13 of 16 hitters he's thrown first pitch strikes to. And coming into this inning he's thrown 67 pitches 47 of them for strikes. Now he's at 70. And if I'm doing my Gazintas right that would be. 50 strikes. He fouled a couple off. There you go. He's allowed three hits over the first four innings. 
Soto skips out of the way now two and two. Soto fly to left his first time up. Well, now Castro's running through a bunch of fingers. Not go to the sixth finger. Line drive wow. caught. Altuve in perfect position. And that right there, that's the overshift working. You don't see it that often with right handed hitters, but that's a base hit. And Altuve standing right there. And they are certainly happy with the play made by Altuve. It is the Keichel family, his parents, Dennis and Teresa. His sister Krista, who is nine months pregnant, and that is why they are sitting in a suite and not out of the stands. Yeah. You don't want to be sitting in this heat. Now from Tulsa, Oklahoma, as Profar fouls off the first pitch. So the Keikels watching their son, brother, cousin, friend. Yeah. On the mound here at Arlington. Seventh round pick. Back in 2009 out of the University of Arkansas. And you know you look at him he's not physically imposing he doesn't light up a radar gun. But the bottom line is if you can make pitches you can get big league hitters out. And we've seen him shut down the Texas lineup today pretty good. Profar pops it up. To the right side. Altuve is under it. Two away. You saw Wallace good drift over there to get under it. I'm pretty sure Keiko, after watching Wallace last night, was calling Altuve's name. I bet you our statistician Marty Aronoff, who does not miss a beat, he reminds us that Jeff King, who you mentioned earlier, his ball hits you in the head like Dallas Keiko. Out of the University of Arkansas. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Jeff King broke all of Kevin McReynolds' records at the University of Arkansas. And I, Kevin McReynolds was a high draft pick with the Padres back when I was with him. And then moved on to the Mets. Yeah. As we connect the dots here in the broadcast booth with the Astros leading the Rangers 4 0. Martin struck out his first time up. Two and one. And, and you see, Keiko is not giving an inch. He is not coming down the middle with anything. He is living on the edges. And back to the slider. Altuve not tall enough to stand that one. No. And, and that's what happens when you try and throw that slider for a strike. He's in a two one count, so you want to get the strike. But it just hung right there in the middle of the play. Perhaps if Altuve were 5'10 or 5'11, he would have made the play. Maybe. No, I'm going to say no. Even at 5'10, he ain't making that play. Now, maybe, I, don't know why six, he, I don't know why he jumped. 6'10, <laughs> perhaps? Maybe. Two out base runner for the Rangers. As Kinsler steps to the plate. Well, the Astros did all their damage with two outs last inning. We'll see if the Rangers can get something going here. But again, another first pitch strike. And we're not talking about strikes right down the middle. This kid is throwing the ball on the black. The Astros have scored all four of their runs of the game with two outs. And, and that's a great separator with great pitchers. And, and I heard Greg Maddox say it, the number of runs that you give up with two outs is amazing. Nothing in two on Kinsler who has reached base twice. Single and a walk. How about that? 16 of 19 first pitch strikes for Keichel. I mean that's how this he, that's how he has to pitch. He has to be ahead in the count. 
And you see that pitch right there at 87. That did not miss the inside corner of the plate by much. The Rangers are trying everything they can do to get this kid in the middle of the plate, and he's just not giving in. Ooh. Oh, my. Our ball hits the first base coach, Dave Anderson. Dave used to be a pretty good fielder, and he missed that one twice. That's why those third base coaches are. Base coaches now have to wear helmets. I mean, this ball is hit hard, and he just simply couldn't get out of the way of it. Knocked his stopwatch out of his hand. He's going fastball in again, a cutter, I would imagine. Yep. I mean, Kinsler's taking these pitches on the inner third like he knows what's coming. Two, two. And Kinsler shoots it into right center. Captures made by the center fielder Barnes to. And the inning as the family of Dallas Keuchel celebrates. He has shut out the Rangers over the first five innings here in Arlington. Taco Bell, sometimes you got to live boss. And by Budweiser, America's beer supports America's heroes. Ready for dinner, Mitch? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? A little brisket. I think you're ready. Brandon Barnes was ready for the pitch from Darvish. Back in the fourth inning, took a deep two-run shot, which gave the Astros a two-nothing lead. They added two runs in the fifth. It's now four-nothing Houston. And and Darvish is sticking with that sinker. He's not really in rhythm tonight. But Barnes took him deep on a two-seamer earlier. You'd think he'd go to his breaking ball, show him to a, a different look. This is the two seamer back in the fourth inning, and he just took a 2 0 pitch. It was in the exact same spot. 
I don't think Barnes is even expecting to get that pitch again, and he sure did. Now the 2 1. Right field, long run for Cruz. He's got it. One away. Let's take a look now at the Fox Sports 1 pitching comparison presented by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. And you would not expect this. If you if you saw this game going into it, you would not expect Dallas Keuchel to be out pitching Darvish, but that's exactly what's happening. Eighty five pitches so far for Keuchel, 102 thrown by Darvish. Now facing Dominguez who has struck out twice. And you can see just how far he's missing with his pitches at the end of last inning he struck. The hitter out and was completely disgusted with himself. Because he had hung a slider so bad the hitter couldn't hit it. Paredes couldn't hit it. Soto. Two away. And he obviously learned. Not to throw Dominguez two seam fastballs because he's throwing him breaking balls all night long. He got him out. Dominguez who took him deep twice in the yep. last. Pitch. Exactly. Pitches don't forget that. So quickly two away here in the sixth as Jake Elmore steps in. Elmore is 0 for 2. Called out on strikes his last time up. I mean. You, you, just Darvish's body language. You see that when you're bouncing fastballs, that that's a mental thing. That doesn't have anything to do with anything other than you're in your own head. You see him trying to think about his arm angle and getting on top of the ball. Pitching has a whole lot to do with body language. When hitters look out there and they see you're unsure. They want to fight at the bat rack to get to the plate. Now one and two on Elmore. He, he's getting back good. He gets separated, keeps his head still. Moreland in foul territory makes the catch. It is the first one, two, three inning on either side tonight. A 10 pitch six for you, Darvish. Five days away from the trading deadline in FoxSports.com. Senior writer Ken Rosenthal has news of a deal that's very close. The rich are about to get richer. The Dodgers are on the verge of getting Ricky Nolasco from the Marlins for three minor league pitchers, none of them top prospects. 
The Dodgers will absorb the rest of Nolasco's remaining salary, about $5.5 million. Top of their rotation now, Kershaw, Greinke, Rue, and Nolasco. For the latest trade rumblings around the league, log on to FoxSports.com as we send you back out to Kenny and Mitch in Arlington. All right, thanks, Pat. Mitch, your thoughts? I think it's going to be great. You, you saw last year what happened with Annabelle Sanchez when he went over to the Detroit Tigers. It took him about four starts to figure out what it was like to pitch for a winner. I think Nolasco is going to be the same way. They've lost so long down there in, in Miami. It takes them a while to figure out, okay, I can go out in the first inning and give up a run or two, and the game's not over. So I think it's going to be a great move for the Dodgers. So Ricky Nolasco could be heading west to join the Dodgers, thanks to our colleague Ken Rosenthal for his report. As Elvis Andrews leads off for the Rangers here in the sixth against Keichel. Andrews 0 for 2. He'll be followed by Cruz and Beltre with the Astros leading the Rangers 4 0. Rangers in dire need of getting Keichel up in the zone. But Keichel has refused, he's not giving in. He's trying for every pitch he lets go of on the edge. For those of you at home that watch the bug on the velocity, he does not throw a pitch the same velocity two times in a row. Two and two on Andrews leading off for the Rangers here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch number 90 from Keichel. Here's a base hit into center field. So the Rangers have the leadoff man on now for the fourth time in six innings, but they have not been able to capitalize. And that's the thing. Dallas Keuchel has done a tremendous job of pitching with runners on base. The Rangers haven't gotten anybody in scoring position in a while. And, and this kid, Paul Clemens, warming up in the bullpen, he, he does not throw 88. He'll rush it up around 98. Nelson Cruz one for two. Base hit right field. Andrews on his way to third. Rangers with runners on the corners and nobody out here in the sixth. And, and this is the importance of Darvish getting to that last inning in six pitches. It's going to allow him to go back out there and throw the seven. If they can get two or three runs back in this inning, Darvish could set himself up, put himself in a position to win this game. Because as I mentioned earlier, and Bo Porter mentioned to us in the meeting, they have struggled at the back end of their bullpen. Or the, the, the bridge guys. Veras has been pretty good as a closer, but getting the ball to him, they've struggled. Well, Mitch, next Saturday on Baseball Night in America, these Rangers will head to Detroit to face Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. Some of you will see the Cardinals and the Cubs, Rockies, Dodgers, Mets, Pirates, Nationals, Marlins. Baseball Night in America on Fox next Saturday, beginning at 7 Eastern. How about the Pittsburgh Pirates with the best record in all of baseball. Tremendous story. And, and, and you look at it, it, we see him make Bo Porter making the pitching change. And the Keiko family should be very proud. I mean, he did a great job of shutting down this lineup. He has not allowed a run, although the base runners are his responsibility. Keiko leaves with a 4 0 lead.
threw 18 of 21 first pitch strikes in his 11 start this season. You know what, Kenny? I, I look at this, and you have a very young manager in Bo Porter, a bullpen that has the worst ERA in baseball, and a guy on the mound that's thrown 91 pitches and stifled this Ranger lineup. I'm going to give him one more hit to give him a chance. So if he gives up the run at third, that's not a crime. But he could get a ground ball double play. You trade in a, uh, two outs for a run. I think I would have given him just a little bit more leash. But instead, it's the hard throwing right hander Paul Clemens on a relief of Keichel. Runners on first and third, nobody out. Facing Adrian Beltre. And I did a game earlier this year. You watch Clemens come set with his front foot. He'll kind of pick it up once, twice. You have to do the same thing every time. He's, he does it as much as three times. If you change it at all, it should be a balk. One, two, three. Beltre pops it up to the right side. Altuve makes the catch one away. And, and we'll, I'll be curious to see. I mean, because he picked that foot up three different times and then brought it set. Because his hands are in a set position. He has to do that the exact same way every time it's considered deceiving the run. But they didn't call it in the last game that I saw him pitch. He has not been called for a balk this season in 25 appearances. And you watch it. He'll do it once or twice, but we just saw him do it three times. If he doesn't do it three times here, it should be a balk. Because watch his hands are set. One, two, three. Okay, did it three times. That's fine. Pitch to Berkman. Ball one. Berkman 0 for 2. Comes to the plate with runners on first and third. One out. 4 nothing lead for the Astros. And here's a good look at his feet. Three again. And I know the last game we did, he did, did it twice in change set. And that's something that's for me is real interesting because you don't see umpires call it. And especially with the veteran Jim Joyce at third base. That was two. Two. Yep. That, that, see that should be a balk. Absolutely should be a balk. See that that to me by the rule book is deceiving the base run. Bases loaded for Mitch Moreland. And this is definitely the situation he did not want to be in. This is a big bat that has the ability to tie this game up with one swing. One career grand slam for Moreland. Rangers have two this season, both off the bat of Nelson Cruz, including one last night. And, and in this situation, and Bull Porter's not even going to watch it, I don't think. He's going out and making a move. I'm kind of shocked that Porter didn't send the catcher out to talk to Clemens and give that reliever a little bit more time to get ready. So the left-hander Wesley Wright will come out of the bullpen and face Moreland with the bases full.
Caught fans here at the ballpark who are excited about Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. The runner and left-hander Wesley Wright, senior member of the Astros, on to face Mitch Moreland with the bases loaded and one out. And, and you see Wesley Wright's numbers. He, he's more of a situational guy. He's going to come in and get a left-hander. The Astros still have a right-hander thrown in the pen. I do not believe that. I think this will be Wright's only hitter. You saw Moreland's numbers against lefties. Better average, less power. One home run. One thing Wesley Wright does, he comes in and gets ahead, and now he's going to expand the zone with breaking balls. And he's got to trust the fact that Castro is going to keep the ball in front of him. Third pitcher of the inning for the Astros. One and one. He got that first pitch called out there, and he tried to go out a little bit further. Umpire didn't give it to him. From right, right field. Andrew is heading home. And he scores the Rangers' first run of the night. Sacrifice fly, RBI number 34 for Mormon. It's now a 4 1 Astros lead. And this will be interesting to me. Because if they bring a right hander in, it would not shock me to see AJ Brzezinski, and that's probably what's keeping Bo Porter from bringing him in right here. He likes this matchup better than he likes that. His right hander against AJ. We saw Fields in the Astros pen, Josh Fields, the right hander. They have a history. Soto is two for seven lifetime against Wright. He's 0 for two tonight. Two on, two out. The old get me over breaking ball. Rangers low to the bases with one out. Score a run on a sacrifice fly. Cruz the runner on second. Berkman at first. And now the 0 1 to Soto. Deep left center. Gone. Three round home run. Giovanni Soto. We are tied. And you know, as a manager, you caught between a rock and a hard coach or kind of damn if you do, damn if you don't kind of deal. And now Keiko, who pitches behind off, he gets no decision. And Darvish, who looks like he's gonna be coming out of this game as the Rangers bullpen's been up and thrown. He pitched poorly by his standards, and he's getting out of here with a no decision. Unless the Rangers hit a homer here and he could actually get a win. So Giovanni Soto goes deep. His fourth home run of the season. Four of his last eight hits have left the ballpark. And you set it up, Mitch. You said that if Bo Porter went to the right hander fields, Ron Washington would probably use Pierzynski as a pitch hitter. Instead, Porter stuck with right against Soto. And Soto takes him deep to tie the game. And you look at that when a guy's two for seven, I'm not sure I'm going to let him pitch there. I, I, I probably would have made the move. Take your guy. I'd rather have a guy face a guy coming off the bench cold. AJ's not a pinch hitter. Tackle can't watch. 
Uh, I, I think all he had to do was hear it. He didn't need to watch it. And trust me, as a reliever, there's no worse feeling in the world than knowing that the starting pitcher pitched his behind off all day long, and in a matter of minutes, you've erased everything he did. And those are hit all his runs. No, no, th two of them. Three of them. Two of them. I'll get it right. <laughs> he came out, hadn't given up a run yet. First two batters reached the setting, and then Keiko was pulled. Yeah, and I, I thought that was a quick hook. You got to give the kid an opportunity to work himself out of it. Eighth batter of the inning for the Rangers. Martin takes a call strike following the walk to Profar. And I kind of understand Bo Porter why he left Wesley Wright out there now. You have a switch hitter coming up. You want Profar to hit right handed rather than left handed. And, and then you got Martin left handed. So I kind of understand it to a point, but you've got to try and win the game. And this is exactly what he told us in the meeting, Ken. They cannot get the ball to their closer. Astros bullpen worst third run average in the American League. And there's Keichel who left with a four nothing lead, did allow the two base runners, left with runners on first and third, nobody out. It's now a 4 4 game. In that situation, I think you have to give Keiko the opportunity to go hitter to hitter. He's got first and third and nobody out. Give him a hitter. He's got a four nothing lead. Give him a hitter. If he gets that guy out, give him another hitter. Give him the opportunity to grow and work his way through that. You have to learn to pitch with the lead. And he did a pretty good job with it all day long. Well, far goes and Martin fouls it off. And obviously Profar didn't glance back in at the catcher. He still doesn't know it's a foul ball. Normally when a guy steals a base at some point he's going to glance and you see Profar's got his head down just hauling. They don't. They won't steal a glance when there's two outs like that. He's just concerned about getting the second. You don't have to worry about it. The ball gets popped up. He's got to get back. I think Profar was going again. I can tell you this: Darvish is in the dugout to Gapper. Gapper. Little bush. <laughs> I think Gapper is a universal, universal term. <laughs> One and two on Martin. Tied at four. Bottom of the sixth inning. Astros had a four nothing lead. Rangers have scored four here in the sixth. Moreland the sack fly and then Soto the big blow a three run shot. There's Keiko the Astros starter who pitched very well. And I think Wesley right now, has, he's put himself in a position where he's way ahead in the count. He's got an extremely good slider. Take your chances. I don't care if you have to him three in a row. Get him to chase. The worst thing he can do right here is throw a strike. He's throwing over the first. He just got the thumb again. Got the thumb, the catcher will flip his thumb up in the air and then get fastball. That means go to first. So those calls are coming from the bench. They know Profar is wrong. He hung that up and in. Seventeen and zero.
scoring four plus runs in the inning this season. That's a pretty good record. They scored four this half inning. And that's a huge deal. You get your backup catcher to hit a three run bomb like that to tie a game up. That's all you can ask out of a backup catcher. Fourth time right has thrown on him. And, and you know the worst thing a pitcher can do right here. You hear the fan fan base booing. A lot of pitchers have stopped throwing over because the crowd is booing. You do what you have to do to keep that guy at first base and out of scoring position. Going with the breaking ball. Profar goes. Bounce to the right side. Altuve over to Wallace. And that will do it for the Rangers in the sixth. Soto, the big blow. We are tied at four. Baseball Night in America returns after these messages from your local Fox station. Giovanni Soto back behind the plate following his three run homer. Tying this game at four as you Darvish comes out to pitch the seventh inning. Facing the top of the Astros order with Altuve leading off. He's 0 for 3. And this kind of surprises me. The Rangers had relievers up the entire inning. In the American League, that normally means they're coming in the game. And I guess Wash. Decided, okay, he's going back out there. He's got a chance to get a win now. If if they can, he can throw up a zero and get back in the dugout. But if I'm Ron Washington and I'm looking at Darvish, or I'm Mike Maddox looking at him, he is out of sync. I have tight to Altuve now, three and one. And I'm going to guess if he puts him on, Robbie Ross is coming in to face Wallace. Because he, he really, other than the first pitch strike, he hasn't been close with the next three. Four straight left handers do up for the Astros after Altuve. Who heads down to first. Good off walk issue by Darvish here in the seventh. Yeah, Ross is saying, I got to go get him. And 
Darvish isn't going to be happy about it because he's a gamer and a competitor. But every now and then, I don't care who you are, you're going to get out of sync. And today, Darvish is out of sync. So it will be a no decision for Darvish earlier today, named to his second consecutive All Star game. Be a no decision if this run doesn't score. Yep. Here comes Robbie Ross. National or American League Allegiance. Don't miss the action. The 2013 All-Star Game, Tuesday, July 16th, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, right here on Fox. Darvish can only watch following the leadoff walk to Altuve. Left-hander Robbie Ross out of the bullpen, and Brett Wallace takes a call strike. Nothing at one. 40th appearance for Ross, facing Wallace, who has reached base three times tonight against Darvish. A double and two walks. And I love this Robbie Ross. He, he doesn't have overpowering stuff, but he comes in like he throws a hundred. He goes right at hitters. He's not afraid of anything. And Altuve is definitely going to be looking to, to steal a base. Here. He has 19 steals, fifth in the American League this season. There, there he, he goes. goes. And that pitch hits Wallace, so. The Astros now with two on and nobody out. In that situation, I think you could have just kept throwing over there because Altuve went first move. As soon as Ross picked his foot up, he was gone. on base for the fourth time tonight. Altuve on second is the responsibility of Darvish. And now in most situations you expect the hitter would be bunny. You see Beltre in at third base. But I don't know if they'll have Castro bunt. Swings at the first pitch from Ross. Nothing in one. Castro headed to the All-Star game. Chatted with John Maley, Astros hitting coach, told us that Cole Porter announced it to the team prior to the game, and then Castro gave a speech in the clubhouse, said he couldn't have done it without his Astro teammates. Falls behind, nothing in two. 
And you know, I look at both of those swings right there, Kenny, from Castro. And the way the Ranger infield is set up, I'm going to move Kinsler to the, if I'm pitching, I'm going to step off the mound and move Kinsler up the middle and move Andrus over in the hole. It's short because he is late on everything. And right now, Kinsler's playing in the hole, and Andrus is going to be the guy covering second base. There's, you see the big hole between Andrus and Beltre at third. One two from Ross missing low and away now two balls two strikes. It would not surprise me to see Ross come back inside. As a pitcher you kind of get hesitant because you did just hit a guy but you still have to go in there. Because so far Castro has not shown he can catch up. Wow. It's a pretty good pitch. Payoff pitch. Castro deep right center. It's gone. A three run shot for the all star Jason Castro off Robbie Ross. The Astros regain the lead and it's now 7 4. And you look at that right there. And he, Ross put himself in a 3 2 count. And it was, he didn't want to throw his breaking ball. We're going to look at the sequence. He came in and threw two fastballs by him right away. That one's right by him. That one's right by him. Goes back out there. Castro lays off. Breaking ball. Lays off. This pitch right here. That right there is a, a good take. And then got, gets a fastball middle, middle. And what did I say to John Maley when we talked to him? I've done two games. He's gone deep in both of them. That's right. Yeah, three for three now. What a night for Castro learns he's an all star. It's a three run shot of the seventh. So both catchers with three run home runs Soto and now Castro. Yeah and. Now Darvish is on the hook for a loss. And Robbie Ross has been a guy that with an inherited runners has been outstanding. Second among American League catchers in home runs. Castro now with 12. Only two on the road. Well, this is a pretty good hit hitter's park right here, but it pretty much didn't matter which park you were playing in that last one. That's a pitch he couldn't get cast over chase. Remember that we mentioned earlier the first four Astro runs came with two outs. All three of their runs here in the seventh with nobody out. Yeah. And you know what you have to give Bo Porter credit. These guys are not rolling over and dying. It's tough you're 20 games out and you're in July, the first part of July. It's hard not to have your hunting magazines out and thinking about. Okay, next year. These guys are still playing hard. Well, they started the season by winning only 10 of their first 40 games. They were 10 and 30. But since then, they've played right around the 500 mark 21 and 26. They've lost seven of their last eight. But over the last 47 games, not too bad. No, I mean, for what was expected of this team, I, I think they've done a pretty good job so far. And what they're trying to do here in Houston, I mean, they, they're retooling the minor league system, which needed to be done. It was ranked 26, I believe, in 2012. It's ranked between fourth and sixth now, I believe. They're in an evaluation state right now. They're trying to evaluate who is going to be able to stay at this level and perform. Mark Capel, first overall draft pick out of Stanford, made his first start last night pitching for 
Class A Tri City. It's two innings, allowed one earned run, three hits. As Pena strikes out, first out of the inning, and, and we chatted with Paul Corner, and I know you've done a couple of other Astro games. He's so enthusiastic, youngest manager in Major League Baseball. In fact, celebrated his birthday yesterday at breakfast with his wife and his five year old son, Bryce, who are here in the Dallas area with him. And trust me, when you're a manager of a team that's this young and you have to watch, I mean, they've made more errors than anybody. And it's due to youth. They're growing up at the big league level on a stage where it's not easy to grow up. And, and Bo brought up something that is a really, really good point. At some point in every one of these kids' lives, they were big men on campus. And now you get to the big leagues and you find out, okay, I'm going to fail. It's how you react to that failure and deal with it and understand, okay, yeah, tonight I failed, but I got to be able to turn the page and come back tomorrow. And that's what they're trying to find out who has that ability from the neck up to do that. One and two on Mark Krause, one of the young players we've been talking about tonight, one of three rookies of the Astros lineup, drove in his first two major league runs. Back in the fifth inning, bases loaded single off Darvish. That gave the Astros a 4 0 lead. Rangers tied it at four. In the bottom of the sixth, and all star catcher Jason Castro with a three run shot off Robbie Ross here in the seventh. And, and Robbie tried to. Guide that breaking ball over rather than just turn it loose and throw it. They all pitched to Kraus. Balled off to the left side. Robbie got up there 95 on that one. He Darvish pitched into the seventh for Ron Washington and Mike Maddox. Got a leadoff walk to Altuve. Pulled for Ross. Who hit Wallace with a pitch, and then the next batter, Castro, took him deep. And I'll tell you what, Krause's approach. I mean, he only had one hit coming in in the next game. But his approach right there, he was sitting on a breaking ball in a 3-2 count and spoiled a pretty good fastball. With an emergency hat. Another foul off to the right side. And that's 93 miles an hour, and he turned on it. That tells if I Ross, that tells me, okay, he's getting to my fastball. I'm gonna try and throw him a breaking ball. And see if he can stay back on it. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat to Kraus. He fouls off another one. He's battling up there at the plate. He's doing a real good job. He's going with the slider now. Kraus gets the bat on it. And has his third consecutive base hit. The, the whole key to that entire bat was Kraus did not try and do too much. He got two strikes on him and he didn't overswing. That was an outstanding pitch right there. And he just top spin lobbed it in the left. Lynn Blum of the Rangers pen, so Kraus. On the tenth pitch of the at bat, singles into left field. Astros have their fourth base runner of the inning. There are the managers. Ron Washington, who was a third base coach in Oakland when Bo Porter played for the A's back in 2000, and Washington a huge influence on Porter when they were together 13 years ago. We Talked to Paul about Ron Washington, and he mentioned his professionalism, his energy. He said, even as a third base coach, Ron had the mentality of a manager. 
Yeah. And, and Wash gave him probably the biggest compliment you can get. He's willing to listen. I, I've never known anyone that learned anything with their mouth open. And, and Bo Porter was a guy that sat back and learned from a lot of different managers, learned from his college football coach. Hayden Fry at the University of Iowa. Paredes swings and misses, and that one caught Soto as Kraus. Did he get hit with the backswing one? Kraus is on the move, and it looks like interference is the call, so yeah. Kraus will be sent back to first. Oh, right in the middle of the back. There ain't any padding back there. Ouch. Anybody who thinks catchers ain't tough, take a full swing with a bat right between the shoulder blades. Wow. That would have been the first career stolen base for Kraus. Long foul down the right field line. Paredes one for three, struck out his last time up. Spent three and a half seasons at the Yankee organization. And then he was traded to the Astros. For Lance Berkman. <laughs> and it doesn't look like he's as hungry as he's bad. No. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't eat sunflower seeds right hand. <laughs> he can only eat them left hand. Really good change up right there. Brady's way out in front of it. And see, there's the difference right there for me, Kenny. You see Krause kind of shorten up and use an emergency hack, and, and Brady is still trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark with two strikes. Second strikeout for Ross. So with two away, here's Barnes, who took Darvish deep in the fourth inning, giving the Astros a two-nothing lead. It's now 7-4 Houston. And you'd like to say that'd be a big enough lead. But Bo Porter has made it clear that their their seventh, eighth inning guys have given them a whole lot of trouble. Now Kraus moves it to scoring position. That's the toughest pitch to block for any catcher to slide. So it doesn't hit and come straight up. It hits and bites and goes the other direction. Pitch thrown by Ross. Now one and one on Barnes. And Ross has started using his changeup more now. I mean, he was behind the count 1 0 there, went to a changeup. Struck Paredes out with the changeup. Rouse takes his lead off second. Three runs in this inning for the Astros. Blocked by Soto now two and one. Soto's getting beat up this inning. Bat in the back, balls in the dirt. Who wants to be a catcher? to the right side. Nice play by Moreland. Ross covering. And the inning finally comes to an end, but the Astros regain the lead. Third All-Star Jason Castro takes Ross deep. Three-run shot. Seventh inning stretch time in Arlington.
July 16th. A look at some of his teammates, the American League starters. You, you look at that, there's a lot of RBIs. Look at the corners. Cabrera and Davis are putting up stupid numbers. Davis hit his 33rd home run of the season earlier today. The American League reserves. Nelson Cruz heading to his second All-Star game representing the Rangers. Look at the top row. Full of Tigers. Their manager Jim Leland will lead the American League squad. And you see there, Leland loves to have three catches. Jason Castro, Salvador Perez, and then Mauer. How about Manny Machado, who turned 21 earlier today? He's already 21. A look at the pitchers, Mariano Rivera in his final season. Matt Scherzer, Tom Perducci and I worked the Tigers game last week. Scherzer now 13-0. He was 12-0 at the time. And I brought up to Jim Leland in our meeting prior to the game. I said, it's going to be hard for you to not start. The pitcher is 12-0. And and Leland said, well, you scheduled to start Saturday the 13th. And I am not going to pitch anyone more than one inning who starts on Saturday. And my start is going to go two innings. So do not expect to see Max Scherzer start the All-Star game even at 13-0. Leland also said that although he legally can start a pitcher who starts a game on Sunday. He said, I won't do it. I will not pitch anybody that starts a game on Sunday. It's not fair to the player or to his manager. Or to the organizations they play for. Exactly. Uh, I mean, the All-Star game means something now. It, it's a very important game because I think home field advantage in any kind of playoff series is just that, an advantage. But Jim Leland knows that he has to have Scherzer to get to the World Series. Josh Fields, fourth pitcher of the day for the Astros. Kinsler, one for two with a walk. Other changes for the Astros in the field. Ronnie Cedeno enters the game at shortstop, and Jake Elmore moves to left field, replacing Kraus. with a base hit into right field. His second hit of the night. And once again, the Rangers have the leadoff man on. Fifth time in seven innings. And, and both corners got to be sitting down there going, what do I have to do to get out of my bullpen? And now you're in a situation where you, you can't bunt Andrews. You can't give up outs at this point in the game. But look at the hole between first and second. That's a huge hole. This is a great time to hit and run. Pressure the defense. Oof. That would have been the pitch to do it. Andrews one for three, singled his last time up. The other thing this opens up, Kenny, look at the amount of ground. Between the pitcher, the first base, and the second base. If he could push a bunt into that area, he could walk the first. Because Altuve is so deep at second. He squares, and now Castro fires down to first. Kinsler back in. It would not surprise me to see him push bump right here. Takes ball two, two and one. That was a little dramatic. <laughs> that ball wasn't even close to hitting. I love hitters that do that though. Astros lead 7-4. Bottom of the seventh inning in Arlington.
Dominguez is back at double play depth at third. He could drag bunt, push bunt. Kinsler goes. Castro fires down to second. No. Out at second is Kinsler. I'll tell you what, on this replay, Altuve did a great job of picking this ball. But to the naked eye from up here, it looked like he Kinsler was under that tag. I could be really wrong. Now, see, we watch the pick. He picks it. He's dead safe. Yep, not even close. You see him pick the ball and bring the glove up. I don't know why he brought the glove up. He's had. It's not even. That's not even close. However, Kinsler has now been caught stealing twice tonight by Castro. What a game for Jason Castro. Oh, Castro's playing great tonight. I, he's an all-star. That's how they're supposed to play. But I think he's just now believing in how good he is. Wonder what kind of plans he had to break. Oh, yeah. I never had to break any rear. I once. Once, right? 89. <laughs> Cold strike three. Andrews down on strikes, two away. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by Bear Advanced Ashman, the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. Well, the 89 All Star game. Note, of course, for the Bo Jackson home run in the first inning off Rick Russell. But what about the job you did in the eighth? Oh, I can't. I got everything out of the way. I, my old teammate, I had played with him for four years, Ruben Sierra. I walked him. Uh-oh. Nelson Cruz, deep center. On the warning track, leaping. Oh. And it is gone. Barnes thought he had it for a moment. But it is number 22 for Nelson Cruz. And now that missed call at second base becomes very big because this would be a one run game right now. So an all star goes deep at the top of the seventh, Castro. And now an all star goes deep at the bottom of the seventh. Here's that play at second. Looked like Kinsler was safe. And then this is a big blow right here. This could have been a, a one run ball game. Barnes got up real good. Just over the top of his glove. And now Beltre with a base hit into right center. So it's a 7 5 game. Beltre on at first with two outs. As Lance Berkman steps in. So getting back to that 89 All-Star game, Ruben Sierra walked, and then you picked him off. Yeah, I only played with him for four straight years. He knew I had a good pickoff move, and the first pitch I picked him off. Then Steve Sox grounded out. He struck out Mickey Tettleton, yeah. and that was it. Yeah, that was the year Mickey was on Fruit Loop. <laughs> Travis Blackley of the Astros pen. What are some of the biggest memories that stand out for you about the whole All-Star experience back in 89? You know what? It, it was in Anaheim and probably the biggest drill for me. There was two things that stood out. I mean, I loved being honored with the, making the team, but I got to meet Ronald Reagan, who was president at the time, and then I got to meet one of the greatest Cowboys ever, Gene Autry. Mr. Autry was a very, very nice man. Ronald Reagan spent the early innings in the broadcast booth. Yeah, he, he came down in the clubhouse and, and came by every locker and shook hands. And this is what you call the stall. This is the, the, the three-corner stall that they run in basketball. Because as soon as Castro gets back behind the plate, both horses come out of that dugout. They do not want Berkman hit left hand. And look at Lance. He knows him. This ain't his first rodeo. Wow, and Bowling ain't coming out. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a good dig by Bo. He looked like he was sitting there comfortable. He didn't fool you, Mitch. So, Porter to the mound. And that will be all for Josh Fields. Hamaker 30 years ago today first grand slam in all-star history July 16th baseball's greatest stars gather in the most exciting city in the world it's the midsummer classic home field advantage for the World Series on the line the 2013 Major League Baseball all-star game live from New York July 16th right here on Fox pitching James Travis Blackley the left hander from down under will face a pinch hitter, Robinson Chirinos. Out to bat for Lance Berkman. And that surprises me that they would pinch hit for Berkman in this situation. Ooh. Chirinos. Four hits in 21 at bats this season. Spent 10 years in the Cubs organization. Missed all of last season due to a concussion. Spent some time with the Tampa Bay Rays two years ago. And he's looking for one thing right here a pitch he can yank. Blackley the fifth. Astros pitcher over the last inning at two thirds. Starter Keichel pitched into the sixth. And I don't know about you, Kenny, but I don't think we're sitting here in the 7 5 game if Keichel was still in the mound. No, probably not. Low throw. I'll tell you what, Wallace has made a couple of good plays over there at first base to keep those runners there. Yes. And he's one of the guys that I'm actually referring to. But you're a former number one pick, which means you were a stud. And he has never been able to take off at the big league level. One 
ball one strike Torino's pinch hitting for Berkman. With two outs bottom of the seventh inning. One and two. You're as a hitter you come up as a pinch hitter late in the game like this. You can't be late on 88. You have to be able to catch up to, to 95. And, and right now, Torino's, he's tardy on an 88 mile an hour fastball. Dave Magadan, Rangers hitting coach. He was a heck of a hitter. Oh. Cedeno with the flip to second. Rangers score a run on the Cruz solo shot. 7-5 Astros through seven. Rangers to within two. He's headed to the All-Star game. Could be joined by Tanner Shepherds, who is the third Rangers pitcher tonight. One of five American leaguers named on the ballot for the final fan vote. This 40 second appearance for Shepherds this season. And you know what, Kenny? This is a kid. You're watching him grow up and excel in a role. It, just as I say that, he gets a bullet hit right back at him. But he's done a tremendous job for Ron Washington. Throws hard, has a good breaking ball, and at some point this kid will end up being a closer. He was a 44th round draft pick back in 2009. On the ballot for the final vote. And, and look at that. They're all pitchers. I don't think that's ever happened. This would probably be the kid I'd vote for. The job he's done because they needed it. Have you been voting? I've seen you on your cell phone between innings. Oh no, I don't ever vote. Not yet. Elmore wants it foul. Now over in the National League, among the five 
potential all stars on the final vote ballot. The rookie sensation. Yasiel Puig of the Dodgers. Now we heard what Harold Reynolds had to say on yeah. our pregame show and and off your body language you do not agree with Harold. No I, I don't do I agree that Puig is an outstanding young player. Yes I do but there's been a lot of guys that come up and get off to great starts. None that have gotten off to the start he's gotten off to. But when you talk you're talking about a month and you got guys that are around the, like an Adrian Beltre. He's not in the game. This is a guy that consistently puts up great numbers, plays unbelievable defense. There's guys in the National League in the outfield that have played all year long, put up good numbers, and they're going to not get a spot because basically it's going to come down to a popularity contest. Had he done this from the beginning of the year, no question he's an all star, but you can't make a judgment on a guy. And call him an all star after 30 games. The maximum number of games that we can play in prior to the all star break is 39. 39, and by the all star break, how many are they going to end up playing? 90 something. Here's a drive deep left field. It is out of here. And that might do it for Tanner's chances <laughs> for the all star team. First major league home run for Jake Elmore. And he came in as a defensive replacement. Oh, he didn't come in. He was in the lineup. Change position. Change position. So Elmore takes Shepherds deep. His first career home run. He's Third home run of the game for the Astros. It's now 9 5 Houston. Yeah, and that's a pretty big thrill for a kid to hit his first home run. He jumps a hanging breaking ball right there. And the guy made an error in the stands. <laughs> Altuve grounds out. The first out of the inning. You see this guy blow this. His wife, are you kidding me? He could have gotten something out of that. He could have probably got signed bats, baseballs, because. Elmore wants that ball. Now a ground screw member is going to get it and ended up giving it to him. The three rookies in the Astros starting lineup have combined to drive in six runs tonight. And that's what this team's all about. They they have to get production. It's not like they get have a ton of veterans to lean on. They've got to get production out of their rookie players. Kraus, Barnes, and Elmore. Two runs batted it apiece. All rookies. Now a base hit into left center. Wallace heading for second as Martin had trouble with it. So Brett Wallace has now reached base five times tonight. He, he's been absolutely great tonight. And this is what they've expected from this kid for the last couple of years. And it just hasn't happened. I think we jinxed Shepherds by talking about the final vote. You, you know what? Whether we jinxed him or not, the fact that he found out about it, he may be trying to do more than he's done all year. And you, you just can't do that. You've got to trust in, in what you've done all year long is good enough. And I think I noticed something that is really odd about him. Normally a pitcher will put his feet in front of the rubber. It looks like he's got half his foot on the rubber. There's a big hole there. And, and I said earlier, I hated coming in throwing out of a hole, but we ain't going to get to see him do it again unless we see a replay of the last pitch. Well, that would be all for Shepherds. He faces four batters, three reach base. Jake Elmore hits his first big lead home run. Here comes Lindblom.
The Rangers go to the bullpen once again. This time it is Josh Lindblom, fourth Texas pitcher of the night, on a relief of Tanner Shepherds. And, and I said before the break, I thought he was throwing with his foot on top of the rubber. That shows it pretty good, but look at this right here, Kenny. I have never seen wow. a big league pitcher. He is on top of the pitcher's rubber. I've never seen a big league pitcher do that. And there is a hole in front of it, so I don't know if that's a reason he did it, but I can say I've never seen it. We also saw the player take a pack of sunflower seeds out of his back pocket right before a pitch yeah. earlier tonight. And you see that hole there. If you come in and there's a hole, you don't move on top of the rubber. You would move side to side, and a lot of guys can't do that. I didn't have any problem doing it. It didn't affect my command. <laughs> so now it's Lindblom out to face Castro. And you see his foot in front of the rubber buried in that hole. And that is a real easy way to tear that bunion area of your foot off. Castro first pitch shoots it into right and Cruz will make the catch for out number two. They don't run on Nelly very often. This is Shepard's in the windup. It looks like he was in front of the rubber there. That's just really odd. I've just I've never seen that. Here's Payne with two outs. 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. And this is a good move by Walsh. He he knows Payne has the ability to run into one. You don't want it to be a seven run game. Or Six run game, excuse me, I don't count very good. We'll forgive you. So Daniel on deck. He will bat for the first time. Payne to the first. So the Astros now with. First and second, two outs for Ronnie Cedeno. Fox Sports is proud to team with Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks that helps feed more than 37 million people in America each year through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Visit feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports to learn how you can fight hunger in your community. Together, we are Feeding America. 9-5 Astros, top of the eighth. First pitch to Cedeno missing high ball one so the Rangers scored 10 last night. Now the Astros have scored nine over the last five innings two in the fourth two in the fifth three in the seventh and two here in the eighth. The three Astros rookies have done the damage. Providing for six runs batted in and the other three coming from the all-star Jason Castro three run homer in the seventh breaking open a 4-4 game now Lindblom falling behind 3 and 0 I don't want to give in as a pitcher in this situation. You have Parady standing on deck and shown he's a free swinger. And we'll eat ways at the plate. <laughs> he'll eat and he'll swing. He'll eat left handed. He hasn't eaten right handed. Not yet. And see that really surprises me. You're not talking about Babe Ruth at the plate. This is Ronnie Cedeno and he's got the green light in the 3 0 count. That surprises me that Bo Porter would give him the green light. Yeah, the outfield is playing very shallow right here.
and that would be why I'm surprised by it. In a 3-1 triple count, he couldn't catch up to a 92 mile an hour fastball. Runners go, payoff pitch is foul back to the screen. Well, you got Wallace on second base, who, who's not a speed demon. This is where that inside move can come in handy because Wallace has to get a good secondary lead to score on a ground ball into the outfield. So Daniel takes a call strike three. So the inning comes to an end. Astros score two more runs. Jake Gilmore with his first major league long ball. Pictures new film R.I.P.D. in theaters July 19th and by Chevrolet Five new roads. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Arlington. Astros lead the Rangers nine to five as Mitch Moreland leads off against Travis Blackley. Moreland drove in a run his last time up with a sacrifice fly. 34th run battered in of the season. The Rangers got to throw up some runs right here. One of their streaks of 17 and 0. When scoring four runs in an inning is going to come to an end. And they are 31 and 1. When scoring at least five runs in a game. Yeah, that's uh, with the pitching staff they have, that should be able to hold up most nights. Darvish just never got in sync tonight. Michael and the Astros had a 4 0 lead. Rangers tied the game at four. As Moreland grounds out to the first baseman, Wallace for out number one. Now Giovanni Soto who tied the game in the bottom of the sixth with a three run shot. He took Wesley right deep. 
Back in the sixth inning. Fourth of the year for Soto. Now getting back to the week discussion with regard to the All-Star game. There have been pitchers who have made the All-Star roster as a rookie, but in all of these cases, they were with their club from the start of the season. But Mark Fidrich made only 13 starts before he was named to an All-Star game. Hideo Nomo, 13 starts at 95. Dontrell Willis, 13 starts in 03. Hugh Darvish, 16 last year. But I think it's a different story when talking about starting pitchers. Absolutely. I mean, you talk, if a pitcher had one third the starts of another pitcher, there's no way he should be eligible for the All Star team. And that's basically what, as we watched Blackley drop a curveball in on Soto for strike three. But there wouldn't even be a discussion about it. And, and now there's a discussion, and I don't doubt for a second. Puig is going to run away with this vote. Absolutely. I mean, I he, will, even, he will be in New York. Yeah, it, it's not even going to be close. But anybody that thinks he's going to hit 420, trust me, first time around the league, you can get away with a lot of stuff as a pitcher and as a hitter. But once they start not skipping over you in pitchers' meetings and find out a way to attack you, they will find your weakness. And his weakness is the inner part of the play. Profar fouls it off down the right field line. Interesting story about the position player who made it to the All-Star game after the fewest number of regular season games. Our friends at Stats LLC letting us know that a fellow by the name of Frankie Zach, who played for the Pirates back in 1944, played in only 44 games before he was named an All-Star. Last name spelled Z-A-K, in case you were wondering. But here's the story. The game was played at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. He was a member of the Pirates. They needed an injury replacement player at the last minute. Frankie yep. was available. Yeah, because when it gets down to the All-Star break, if you're not on the All-Star team, you are hauling to go home and spend four days at home and relax. Ron Washington heading back to his hometown of New Orleans. Of course, he managed the All-Star game each of the last two years. And that's always a good thing because that means you were in a World Series the previous year. Jim Leland will manage his third All Star game. Bruce Bochy, of course, on the National League side, his Giants have won the World Series two of the last three seasons, so he is an All Star veteran as well. And we just got an update on Puig. To tell you how, how pitchers will adjust and hitters will adjust to good pitchers. Tonight, Puig 0 for 4 with four punch outs. Wow. It doesn't take long before pitchers come up with a book on how to attack you. And just watching and seeing what I've seen from him, he has a huge problem with anything in. So it has not been a good night for a couple of the guys on the final. Ballot. Right. Tanner Shepherds with the Rangers. But Puig's arms look like they're about eight feet long. He stands way off the plate, which is a pitcher that tells you he, he can't get to the ball inside. They stand to protect their weakness, but he kills everything outer third. He hit a ball out of the park. Here's some some shots. See that ball is outer third. And he hits out of the ballpark. Outer third. Out of the ballpark. But anything, I mean, he's a tremendous defensive outfielder. There's no question about that. I mean, that happened in his first game. He doubled the guy off from the track. He's got an absolute cannon of an arm. He is a tremendous talent. But people are, I just don't want people to think, okay, this guy's going to hit 400. He's not going to hit 400. Two to the pro far. And he lines out to the shortstop, Sedano, for a one, two, three, eight for Blackley. We head to the ninth here at Arlington.
Ninth inning here in Arlington. Kenny Albert, Mitch Williams. Astros lead the Rangers 9 to 5 as Jimmy Paredes leads off for Houston. One for four of the game tonight. And, and right now, Ron Washington just out of Lindblom. All he wants to get us back in the dugout. And see if we can't mount a rally in the ninth. Rangers will have Martin, Kinsler, and Andrews do up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Astros with three home runs. Accounting for seven of their nine runs. Kraus drove in the other two with a bases loaded single in the fifth. His first two career runs batted in. On the ground to the second baseman, Kinsler. One away. Our Fox Sports 1 game summary presented by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network coming August 17th. Rangers starter Hugh Darvish, an all-star, allowed five earned runs in six innings. Soto tied the game with a three-run shot in the sixth, but then another all-star, Jason Castro, would give the Astros the lead with a three-run homer in the seventh. And how about the job the three rookies have done for Houston tonight, combining for six Runs batted in. One of them is at the plate right now. Barnes hit a two-run shot of the fourth. Elmore with his first major league home run of the eighth. And we mentioned the two runs batted in for Kraus in the fifth inning. Youngest team in baseball. And those youngsters have gotten the job done tonight for both quarters Astros. And that's all you want as a manager of a young team like this. They're going to struggle. But you want them to have nights like this where they go out there and do something great. You have to have so much patience. And, and, and talking to Bo as much as I've talked to him this year, I don't know that they could have hired a better man for that job because he is loaded with patience and upbeat, and it's hard. Barnes got on strike for out number two. And we talked to Bo about some of his influences. We mentioned Ron Washington. They were together in Oakland back in 2000. He played for and worked under Jim Riggleman. Spent a lot of time with Freddie Gonzalez, Kirk Gibson, A.J. Hinch, Davey Johnson in Washington the last couple of years. Well, you spend time under guys like Freddie Gonzalez, Gibby. Gibby was a gamer. I mean, he manages like he played. And, and then you, you bring Davey Johnson into the mix there. I mean, you're getting guys from a, a whole lot of different eras. And if you can pick those guys' brains and find what works for you, because managing at the big league level, I got a nine-year-old that could strategically manage a big league game. You're managing 25 personalities and trying to put them in spots where they can have success. That's where the difficulty comes in. Dominguez, center field, right up to the glove of Martin. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Astros with a four-run lead.
So as we move to the bottom of the ninth, there's Jason Castro behind the plate, the all-star, and the king. Play of the game brought to you by Burger King, where it tastes as king. Castro breaks a 4-4 tie with a three-run shot off Robbie Ross in the top of the seventh inning. That gave the Astros a 7-4 lead, and they have not looked back. The Astros closer, Jose Veras, in a non-save situation here in the bottom of the ninth with Houston leading by four. And Mitch, we are told that the official score, Will Rudd, has determined that if the lead holds up, Blackley will get the win, even though Wright is the pitcher of record. But because Wesley Wright was ineffective in his yep. outing, he allowed that three-run homer to Soto in the sixth. It will be Blackley who picks up the victory. Yep, they, the official score. Now look at the hole. Varus is complaining about the hole. And, and honestly, I, the grounds crew, I don't believe, can be called out. He's got to make the adjustment and either move to the other side. That will surprise me if he, they allow him to bring a, a guy out and fill that hole. That's just part of the game. Wow. It looked here they come. This this to me is absolutely I have never seen this. That's the third thing we've never yeah. seen. I, I, I've never seen this happen. Yeah, we we see Tanner Shepherds. He ended up on top of the pitcher's rubber. You watch his plant foot here. He's on top. Now I don't know if he does that all the time or to avoid that hole, but I can't see him doing that all the time. There's no way any pitching coach in the world would say, oh, yeah, that's fine. But I have never seen him come to the mound in a game that hadn't been rain delayed and work on the mound for a pitcher. You have to come in and just find a spot. You were going to remember this night for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we found all kinds of stuff we've never seen. So the Browns crew works on the mound for Veras, and we remind you to get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. Your home for great live sports, all that is and highlights you watch, shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, coming August 17th. Great job by our entire crew tonight here at Arlington, led by our producer Aaron Stoikoff. Director Matt Gangle, Associate Director Eric Mandia, Broadcast Associate Mike Strack, Executive Producer of the pregame show Mike Connor, Producer Ethan Kleinberg, Director Mike Martin, and Marty Aronoff crunching the numbers for us here at Rangers Ballpark as Jose Veras looks to close out the Texas Rangers, who for the moment are tied for first with Oakland in the American League West. Yeah, and unless Veras implodes, it, it, they're going to. Remain in second place because they'll lose that half game back. I'm still amazed by this. I honestly, I have never. Seen, I've been involved in professional baseball since 1982, and I have never seen that. I remember seeing video of Satchel Paige throw out of a hole that was about shin deep. <laughs> How old was it? <laughs> Probably in his mid 40s. And I'm not. We talked about Bo Porter going to his bullpen when this Keichel had done such a good job, had not allowed a run yet. And I thought that was a little bit of a panic move to do that. This is another one I question. I know he's had trouble in his bullpen, but say Varis gets in trouble. Who do you go to then? You don't have another closer down there. It's not a save opportunity. So Varis facing Martin called strike nothing in one only two pitchers in the pen have not been used by the Astros left hander Brent Oberholzer and right hander Jose Cisnero. Varis the sixth Houston pitcher tonight. Martin one for three. And it would not Varis is. Normally he's got his fastball up around 94 to 96. He's 92 and 93 on the first two pitches. 
Some closers need that safe situation for adrenaline. How did you feel pitching in situations like this in non safe situations? I never had a problem with adrenaline. A guy standing sixty feet six inches from me with a bat that could hit a bullet off me was adrenaline enough. I had no problem. What's your adrenaline level like right now? It's pretty mellow in a nine nine five game. And I have haven't blown a save in like seventeen years, I think. I don't have a bat in my hand. Yeah. Even if I did, you wouldn't have to worry. <laughs> You'd only foul me off, Kenny. One and two on Martin. Kinsler on deck, and then Andrews. And in this situation, in a, in a four run deficit, I got to believe the Rangers are going to take a strike. And that was one thing I hated. When I knew the hitter was taken, I couldn't get it in the zip code. Whoa. Two balls, two strikes on Martin. Astros lead 9 5. Bottom of the ninth here at Arlington. Two two from Paris. Martin down on strikes for the second time tonight. One away. Real good breaking ball right there from Paris. See this ball starts right in the middle of the zone and just the bottom falls out of it. So with one away, here's Kinsler. Who has reached base three times tonight and Mitch for the first time in his career he has been caught stealing twice although the last time certainly looked <laughs> safe to us yeah yeah the Rangers are up there they're taking a strike in this situation and that's a smart thing to do they need base runners a solo homer isn't going to do them any good right now Nothing and two on Kinsler. Barrios is sinking the ball good. As we approach four hours in a nine inning game, this will be the 325th pitch tonight. Kinsler. Center field, Barnes. Two away. Well, our Ken Rosenthal reported earlier that Ricky Nolasco is heading from the Marlins to the Dodgers. And Ken has confirmed that the deal has gone through. And that's a, it's a good trade for him. I mean, the Dodgers are still in this thing. I'm really in it. I, they've been playing really well. And I still believe that Matt Kemp has got to stay healthy for them to, to win that division. And he hurt his shoulder again the other night. And that, to me, makes no sense. Elvis Andrus, who doesn't hit home runs, up there swinging first pitch. But I love the trade for uh, Nolasco getting back to that, Kenny, because honestly, he spent so much time in Miami. He, he's pitched great games in Miami. And he just had nothing to show for it. Andrews flies out to right. Ball game is over. The Astros defeat the Rangers 9 to 5 in three hours, 50 minutes for the Rangers, their longest game of the year. Jake Elmore, his first major league home run, one of three hit by the Astros tonight. Mitch and I will return to Arlington in a moment.